All right, so um, last time you guys were um, you guys decide. Oh, you guys decided to enter the death house, mm -hmm. and so you guys went through. And we went through. Um, you know what? No notes. Here we go. You guys went through into the death house gate and appeared through a different portal gate in the middle of like a a town. And when you walked into the town, you found these. All these that the town was partying. Um, very nice. You didn't seem like any. There was no. Uh, there was no negative or positive energy. No evil or, or good uh, or good energy could be found or sensed. Um, and uh, I believe Aranus went up to a or Lone Star went up to a person at the um, the first person they found, which is an older gentleman, and the older gentleman's name was. Um, it was old man staff, old man staff, old man staff informed you that, uh, the town was celebrating, um, King, uh, Brock's, um, engagement to like the 23rd, uh, 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 female that he's married and, uh, and the whole town is going crazy and they're going to have a celebration at the town square um very soon so you guys uh and then lone star gave old man staff a um item from his from his uh his bag and he wished him farewell and told him something about so uh, the item had a a stamp on of talus on it then you guys went to a bar in the bar you guys met um a drunk at the at the bar uh and the bartender, the drunk's name was um, uh, Scave. Uh, what was it? Scave. Scave. And the bartender's name was, uh, I forgot. Scave was the bartender's name. Scave. And my notebook. Yes. Wait for it, wait for it. The town of Brock the King, where all they drink is Brockahall. <laughs> yeah. They drank Brockahall, and you guys also drank Brockahall, getting drunker and drunker as you went on. Um, here it is. And so you guys met the bartender, um, and you cheers, and uh, Plaskin bought everyone at the bar a drink. Um, and everyone was really, really happy. They started cheering for for him. So Scave was the old man at the at the bar, and he told you about um, the the drink called um, uh, Brockla Hall that everyone was drinking. And he bought you the first round as a thank you. Lone Star gave uh, Scave a horseshoe with a stamp of a talus, talus the, the god on him, um, and then uh, shr shrill. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Scave, um, uh, the bartender, um, uh, cheers you guys. I, I think the sh shrill. I think Shrill was a bartender. Yeah, Shrill was a bartender. Uh, I don't think the drunk gave you his name. Um, and um, and he, whatever. Um, you guys cheers him, um, and you gave uh, the bartender. Another item, um, and they were all. Oh, it was Croc, Croc, I think. Or, no, wait. Who was dull? No. So you. So the old man staff. Uh, Gave was the bartender, the the drunk at the bar. Croc mm -hmm. was the um, old man Croc. Uh, and then you had no the bartender. Whatever, whatever. You guys left the bar, and right as you left the right as you left the bar. The entire, the, you guys, it felt like um, just as you took a step out of the bar, you be, you were in in a, in a long tomb, in a big tomb, like echoed, echoed. Um, and there was darkness. And this person was saying, um, gave you some riddles to answer. One of the riddles was uh, like, uh, Jake, you would have gotten this. It was like, it was like, 
I begin, I begin where, um, and I end, uh, know what I, what am I? And Jake, if you were there, you probably would have said W, but instead the group said like penis or, or like the, the group, the, the, the group said, the group said uh, Brock. Yeah, <laughs> the group said Brock, and so we had to kill um, Ivo because of that. That was that was it. That's how I got killed. <laughs> that's, that's essentially how you died. Um, and then once the answer, once you guys answered the uh, appropriate question, um, a light flashed, and you appeared back at the at the bar, right as if right as if time didn't change, and you were stepping back into the into the field. So. You found um, more old men. You realized through your perception that the entire town, the bar, the town, the people that you passed in the in the field were all old, gross men. Just there was no female. Um, you went to the king, the king uh, <laughs> castle. It seemed where more and more people were crowded around. You met this guy named Shrill. Shrill um, pointed you towards a tattoo parlor. Um, guy, and the, the tattoo guy's name was was uh, Doll. The guy tattooed a penis onto um, Plastic's <laughs> face. Um, I about that. <laughs> and then, it was temporary, you know. yeah. it was um, And then there was another. There was another flash, and you guys appeared back into that chamber with the shadows. Another round of um, riddles happened. Um, that's actually when when uh, Ivo died, and then when when the shadows disappeared, there was a there was a, a zombie that you had to defeat. Once you defeated the zombie and investigated Ivo to make sure he was actually dead, um, you saw his sort of his soul leave his body when his eyes kind of faded away and died. Just as you realized that he was dead, um, you came back to the celebration at the king's castle. A dot, a some a very very young girl was taken out of the carriage, um, and sacrificed, um, and it looked like they, they were about to sacrifice. Lone Star went up there to try to protect. Um, after after having a conversation with Brock the King, um, it it flashed back into the shadow realm where you fought the the shadow <laughs> demon. You defeated the shadow demon. Went back to Brock's castle. Uh, <laughs> And you manipulated Brock into spreading the word of Talus, um, the god Talus, the god of storms, um, and he used a knife with Talus's symbol. Oh, the ring, the ring that you gave him. You gave him a ring of Talus and said, "Spread the good Lord, the good word." You have him. Um, and your, he he put the the ring on the knife before. Yeah, and then, and then he stabbed the girl to death with the knife with the ring. No one gave a shit about the young girl. You guys didn't care at all about that that hook that story hook. You guys were like, let him fucking die. And Talus, uh, I mean, uh, Brock, uh, Brock then told you guys, you know, take care. Um, and when you, oh, when you killed the shadow god, you found that last little ring. Um, that that would uh, open up the other portal in the other realm. So you went back to the portal, transported through the um, the portal again, and you put the ring symbol on the last portal of the three at the top of that hill. And as you did, uh, water began to flow into the um, into the room, and the room is filling up with water as you speak. Um, there's not a lot of time. The pressure of the water. Uh, and you're about neck deep um, and the water is continuing and continuing. Your passive perception allows you to see that and taste that um, it's definitely seawater, salty. Um, as you move forward, um, just know that Brock the king and Brock the old men, oh, when they killed the daughter, when they killed that girl, um, they all became a little bit younger, which was weird. And uh, another story hook that was ignored. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lone Star is very aware that he has a army of um, uh, people who live forever cheering his name now, trying to spread his name um, for twenty nine more days. 
I promise you it's not a good way of spreading it. But uh, <laughs> so so Lone Star sort of set a crusade <laughs> with a bunch of old men. Old you men are going around now trying to go through. Who cares if it's a good name? Uh, um, so anyway, you guys are now in this room. Um, is everyone logged in here? Yeah, right. Oh, and during the final fight with that um, big thing, all the people that Lone Star gave items to came in and used them against them. Uh-oh. They came and helped us. Oh, yeah, you gave, yeah, that's Old right. Man Staff, the Wand of Magic Missiles. Yes, that's right. Dull, the Light Crossbow. Yeah, you gave Dull, the Crossbow. Oh, yeah, the Horseshoe. Someone threw a horseshoe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're uh, back to this freaking area yes <clears throat> and um the <clears throat> so how are we going to do this are you using uh, my are you using my old my my body is that my body right there yeah we can use using, using your old body we'll use your isn't old that body. my isn't that my avatar thing just wait till he turns your old avatar into a demon and attacks him, attacks you with him. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope he goes after you guys. You guys let me die. It's true. I didn't let you die. I just don't know how to answer riddles. Well, I know how to answer them. I just can't. Um, so you guys are there. You have free roam. Just remember the, the room is filling with water. Um, the water right now is right here and so when we're in this tunnel right yeah and this it's filling up really 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 fast it's oh we're gonna can we is there is it possible to get through this opening um yes <laughs> sort of um as you guys are thinking about what to do uh the water starts to fill up around you um your legs um are it's up to your I'm knees gonna... now. As I'm going to grab one of the working uh, scuba suits and put it on. Okay, so um, who has breathing apparatus? Jake, did you have a breathing app apparatus? Uh, I, I think we remember. found two and a half working ones. I think Aaron definitely took a working one. Um, or maybe his didn't. All right, well, then yeah, I'll let me check my notes. Is there another one to be had? There are three. One's not working. Yeah. I don't have them in my inventory. But shit's about to get uh, interesting because just but as... We have, yeah. But we have two working ones. Yeah. Somewhere. A... Um, piece of so the water is now floating in it's up to your chest getting higher and higher and higher all right well is there another one i'm gonna put one on and see if it works all right you can put two one on. working breathing that that work two need to be connected mm. so we have four and two don't work all right, so uh, one of them, one of them. Uh, so who, who, your, yours works, Chris, right? Yeah, Lone Star's putting on a working one. So you're. So I'm gonna put on the working one. Okay, so you guys both have working scuba suits, and um, just as you guys put it on, uh, you submerge in, into the underwater. Um, and just as you submerge, there's a little bit of uh, lag in the flow of the water. And um, a piece, a big piece of wood uh, comes floating in um, above here. Um, and it's floating, I don't know, X, Y, Z. Um, I'm just gonna put this uh, in the middle of the room. It's about 10 feet above your guy's head. Um, and on that piece of wood is, um, a gentleman named who I think you're right. all familiar with. Uh, just as you guys put on your scuba suit, you oh, see you see an oak. You see an orc um, and another and another body 
uh, float in from this this big this big wave comes in crashing, bringing this big piece of driftwood. And on the driftwood are two very strong looking gentlemen. One's one's guy's name. You you see you, and you think to yourself, you're like, oh my god, is that fucking Drake again? Where is this? This guy just keeps coming up. Um, and the other guy uh, has yet to introduce himself. I don't think Lone Star has met Drake before. We're about to find out what happened. Oh. <clears throat> well, Lone Star will start swimming over towards the log and telepathically tell Sprock, can't you turn into uh, something that can breathe water? Uh, yeah, I probably can do that. But then Drake isn't going to recognize me. I'm just going to swim up to the wood and yeah. uh, kind of come up next to Drake and be like, shout, Drake? Um, Drake is going to say to his companion named... What is, what is his name, Mike? I have a lot of different options here. Uh, I'll just go ooh. for it. Oh, 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 hold on. Gotta get my notes ready. It's my it's a big decision here. It is a huge decision. No pressure. You can always have a, a nickname. Let's go with Tevrit. Tevrit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tevrit. Um Okay, Tev, how do you spell that? T-E-V-R-I-T. All right, during one of your turns, I'm going to change your character to Tevrit. Right. <laughs> Tevrit. Um, so you hear, you hear um, as you get closer, you hear mumbling, mumbling sounds. Um, Sprock, are you going to go straight up to the... How are you going to say his name? What was his name? Tevrit and Drake, but you only recognize... Um, Drake. Yeah, and I shout out, "What's up, Drake? Is that you?" Um, Drake is gonna try to. He's, you know, the water's flowing in. I don't know if he's gonna be able to hear see you. Um, he got a nap one, so he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he doesn't make you out. Um, Tevrit, give me a perception check, Tevrit, with disadvantage because there's waves and you just came in for this weird. Eleven. All right, Tevrit, you see this, you you're on this, you're on this um floating piece of wood with this other um barbarian looking guy named Drake that you just met previously. You're not exactly sure how you got there. And you look to your left and you see a um character in a scuba diving suit, an old one, one of those old scuba diving suits, looking at you out with the glass like that. And he's saying, he's opening, he's saying, Drake. Give me that scuba suit. That's what you I say. Can't, I can't breathe. Linda can Drake. Um, Drake, yeah, isn't he up on the wood though? Yeah, you, we're both on the wood, and the and the wood is getting uh, closer and closer to the ceiling. Um, and Drake says, "Sprock, is that you?" And I step up on the piece of wood, and I take off the start to take off the scuba suit, and be like, "Hey, what's up, buddy?" What brings you to this fun part of town? Um, the 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 water is getting higher and higher and higher, and the ceiling is getting closer and closer and closer. And Drake says, uh, "We were just we were just in the water. Uh, I don't know exactly sure how we got here, but we're chained to this driftwood. Me and this friend, my friend Tevrit, we're chained to this driftwood. Not sure exactly what happened." Last time I saw you guys, I was going to go into the desert and fight at the Coliseum as a gladiator. Must have met Tevrit somewhere along the way. And I don't know exactly how I got here, but it's not, I'm happy to see you. How do we get out of here? The water is rising. As I'm taking off the scuba suit, I'm throwing the pieces to him and I'm saying, here, put this on. And then I look at Tevrit. I think there's a broken one down there that maybe you can hook up to his and share. And I keep giving him the pieces and Drake starts putting them on. Thank How you. heavy does that ch the chains chaining them up look? Huh? 
How heavy do the chains holding them to the log look? Uh, they're tied to their ankles um, okay. to, the, to, to, to it. Um, Can I go up and uh, punch one of the chains trying to break it? Yes. Give me a, uh, I guess, a strength. And I, okay, strength. Yeah. Ooh, not good. Can I, can I punch it and attack it? <laughs> Did you? Yeah, you can punch it. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, I'm in my metal armor. I'd just punch at the chain. So I'm gonna cast booming blade at it too. All right. So are you gonna stay? Because you're in you're in metal armor, which is gonna make you sink. So are you I'm gonna, gonna swim? Oh, you're yeah. You can swim. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I can swim, and now at level eight, my armor is four separate pieces. Got it. So yeah, I can just turn my gloves on to make the punch. Um, I don't get the AC bonus for it. Um, but so I go on, I punch at it for a 23 or something. Yeah, 23. Hit it for uh plus what the fuck? Nine points of thunder damage and another three points of thunder damage. So 12 points of thunder damage at the chain. The chain snaps in half, um, but and the piece of wood that the, that the chain was on also breaks in half. Um, Tevrit and Drake fall off and are now treading water at the top. Um, the piece of wood is sort of disintegrated with that blast. We're treading water. Um, I'm trying, Drake is trying to put on his suit. Um, he's looking over at Tevrit um, and he says, uh, take a deep breath. And uh, I believe my, my friend Sprock will help us get out of here. So take a deep breath and let's go. Um, and Not then, a very good swimmer, but I'll, I'll go for the, yeah. I'll go for the scuba tape. Um, and then the, the. Lodestar will help this new guy go for the, uh, the gear at the bottom. So the, um, um, the water finishes filling the room and there's nowhere else to go but down. Uh, movement in this, as you, in the, in the. Uh, right as it gets to the roof, I turn into a reef shark. Really? Really. That's sick. That's right. Um, all right. So movement will be, I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but with the screen, but it doesn't really matter because it's D&D. &D. Uh, movement will be um, half your, as you move forward, you're you're underwater right now. Well, unless you have a movement or a swim speed. Yeah. And I think I think what I'll do is you're it, it is six seconds around. So every now and then I'm gonna I'm gonna say one one round, two round, three round. You're gonna go six rounds. Um no, you go go about five rounds. Um I'll just tell you when you start when we start taking effects to the breathing portion of it, because you are. One of us is still trying to hold it, hold their breath. Um, is my is Drake's uh, thing still? Um, is Drake's things working? Does he have a magic one, or does he have a, does he have one that has the um, get they're, they're like so like the ones I gave you? One of them, two of them were magic and were just work and breathe. The other one um, have to be hooked up to a hose that goes up to a to a ship okay well then drake would have one of the working ones okay lone star would have one of the working ones and um the other guy. I would, i'd grab this new guy yeah I'd grab this other suit but to um that tell me when he needs to breathe and we'll swap yeah. cool okay so i'll just have my okay. arm around him swimming next to him so where would you guys like i'll telepathically tell him that this one's called To the Beach. Um, what would you guys like to do? Get out of here? Let's get the hell out of here. I don't like this water. Let's go through that tunnel. Yeah. Through that door and go right. up. <laughs> Agreed. You'll, you guys will um, tell me at what height you guys want to do things and how you want to, you know, movement, movement ways uh, underwater. You can go in any direction. Um, there will be, there may or may not be currents. There may be things that, you know, if a fish swims by and hits you, you'll have to do a strength check of some kind to not get knocked away and so on and so forth. A, a fish? 
Yeah, yeah they're fucking huge. <laughs> Have you ever um, been hit by a fish in the water? That's terrifying. Hit? I've been hit by a, a jellyfish hurt. and I shit my pants. <laughs> like standing out there in the ocean, all of a sudden something touches you. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, but I never got like thrown. No, if a big one hits you, it, it oh. you lose your sense of control. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So I'm gonna open up this next um room. I'm gonna say good night to Margo, and then I will describe where you guys are. I tried to put um an ocean there on top i don't know how it's going to be when you guys try to move around but let me bring your characters in go from there jake do you finish leveling up yeah yeah i don't know i'm gonna need to read through more of these feats so we'll just keep going okay i i think i might pick a feat though i'll be right back what ones are you thinking about alert yeah, your your passive perception would be what twenty eight or something. Yeah, something crazy. Um, that's the one where you can't be surprised, right? Yeah, it's like literally oh, cannot be that's, surprised. That's yeah, it's like the weapon of warning stuff automatic. That's nice. <laughs> um, you gain five to initiative. You can't be surprised while you're conscious. When other creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against you as a result of being unseen by you. Yeah, that one's that. Yeah, that's nice. Are you thinking about any other ones? Well, I don't know. That one was really a crazy. Lucky also sounds like fun. Um, Lucky, you have to be. You just have to use them if you have that feat. Otherwise, there's a lot of times where you'll go a whole day not use them exactly and it's like that's the point you just gotta use them yeah um, so does a barbarian not have spells they do barbarian does not ca uh, have spells when you are raging you cannot cast spells nor concentrate on them what do you mean by concentrate on them so if you um some spells were uh have a concentration component where it can continue lasting for a period of time like invisibility you cast it and you maintain concentration for the hour okay so uh as soon as you rage you drop all concentration so you can't cast a spell and then and then rage something like else if I, had, if I had like a cloak or something i can't use that and rage if you if you have a cloak yeah all magic items work okay but if you're raging and it's like the cloak saying you cast the spell, then that won't work because you're raging. And but you can always end your rage and then cast the spell, depending on what the spell is. Okay, that's cool. All right, so you guys come out of this um, portal. Um, right next to these long um, seaweed looking things. Um, as you turn around, you can clearly see um, the portal, uh, just like in the other realm, um, when you looked back through the portal, um, the portal, you couldn't see back. In, you could see back into the room that you just came out of. And then it sort of fades away. And now you're just, as you're staring at it, it fades away and you're just looking directly through the portal hole. There's no- Like an empty door frame. Yeah, an empty door frame. Um, if you wanted to re-trigger it, you'd have to figure out, you, get, you guys sort of feel like um, you know how to, how to reactivate it. You'd have to try to figure out how to reactivate it um in this wh wh whatever realm you're in just sort of like you did at uh brock's uh ki kingdom um with the circular stamp but when you walk through this um the only thing that's different is you're completely submerged underwater you're allowed to uh does there, does there look like there is a surface you guys are I would say several hundred feet underwater. 
200 feet underwater. Um, <clears throat> That's a lot of feet underwater. Yeah. So, I mean, if you wanted to, um, yeah, that's what it looks like. You, you the, the light is sort of dimish. A hundred feet is not that bad, that bad, is it? Coming out pressurized at that, it, you would need to take your time to come up. Yes, you would. Without dying. It would also be very dark at 200 feet. 200 feet? No. If there's, depends on the light. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's polluted water, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you um, are looking around, um, moving around, swimming around, you do see and feel movement around you. There are um, the seaweeds and the movement of the ocean is swaying. I'm gonna hold on to the back of, uh, what's your name? Trivet's shoulders, like a little backpack. Trivet. Trivet. Like a Trivet. Trevrit. Tev. Tevrit. <laughs> like a little like a little Yoda backpack as a bird. <clears throat> and so we could swap the uh breathing. So we'll just stay together. Thank you, brother. Okay. Uh when you do when you do that breathing effect, you'll have to do a um a deck save because you are underwater and or a sleight of hand. I, I guess a deck would be a deck save. Um, okay. So where would you guys like to go? What would you like to do? Um, the ground seems to be um, the ground seems to be just a, like an ocean floor. Um, there are objects further uh, yonder. They look like shells and and stuff. I don't know if you want to go exploring there. Um, you do know that the the uh, sign on the portal said to the beach. Does there appear to be a slope in the sand? Like one side getting shallower? Not that you can know. Okay. Not that you would be able to is all the vegetation around the same? Um, there's just some some coral. Um, there's whatever the fuck this is. Not not really. It's just the uh, just around just around that that portal entrance. Um, are there, are but, there any fish? Uh, that's a good question. Why don't you give me a uh, perception check? And I'll ask Rock if he sees any fish because he's a shark. Yeah, trying to find the. Uh... Ooh, yeah, my fucker. Come on. Um, it's a eighteen. So. Um, did Sprock look at that, or did you look at that? That was me looking. So you look. Um, way out you see some you know what you what you normally see you see small fish swimming around here some sort of fish swimming around there um nothing dangerous um nothing out of the ordinary um just a normal what you can tell is a normal uh seabed onward Which direction? Let's, let's find this beach. Do I want to? Do we want to go up to the surface and see if we can see land? Can we can we send somebody? Or we can can the shark go up? I think the shark moves fastest, and oh, then, yeah. uh, sure. it's going to be much uh, more difficult for us since we're uh, going piggyback style here. Mr. Sharkman, you want to go exploring? Yeah, I'm going to go exploring. <laughs> I can go 40 feet because I can swim. Yeah, you have free, you have free roam. Um, what you go 40 feet? Are you going up? 
Uh, I guess I'll go. What we think up is where the tunnel is. We're we're not sure what's up, but we can't see anything else. I don't know, no, I'm gonna go out around. Well, do we we all have air, right? I'm, I'm we're so, sharing. Everett and Lone Star are Yodo, Yoda. How, what's the air supply time? Do we know? Yeah, we do not. We oh. know the two magic ones. I think that they they just last. Interesting. All right. Well, then yes, I will go up forty feet straight up. Okay. Um. All right. Give me a perception check when you get forty feet up. Well, I can't move up in the board, right? Uh, yeah, don't worry about that. Do a perception check. Eighteen. Okay, and um, <coughs> see um open open water um, at the corner um, way off in the distance you can see something uh, similar to the uh, um, long thin uh, what is this shit called um, seaweed seaweed hanging hanging off in the distance uh, Which direction? Uh, towards uh, Christmas space over here in the corner of the okay the so where the seaweed is yeah I'll just it's a no away from the sea, yeah, the opposite direction of the seaweed. Oh, okay. Um, and with an 18, that's that's it, open water. How far can I see? That should be a, um, like 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. I think you can see about 60, 60, 70 feet, 80 feet. Okay. Water, you're a shark, maybe. Okay. You're a shark. How far can you smell? Yeah. How far? Um, <laughs> but I don't know if you I, are you going to go back and tell the group that? Um, and it's no, I, I'm, I'm going to go further. So can I just keep going? Sure. I want to go another uh, 40 feet up. Okay. So you're now 80 feet up. And we'll just keep you there. Um, give me a perception check. Twenty-four. Um, there is a massive shark. Huge. Um, that's what she said. You see, a, you see a big shadow, but you got a nice score. Um, and I'm going to make it a. These guys are. This looks like a, it says wear shark, but it's not a wear shark. Uh, although I like the idea of a wear shark, that's fucking cool. Um, you see this massive shark come into the into the picture. Holy shit! Um, it's sort of like a megalodony looking thing. Um, it doesn't have legs. It's just swimming. That's just 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 as a model. Um, and it swims sort of off in the distance, and I, it has a passive perception. Um, it does not pick you up, but you see it. All right. And yeah. Every now and then, it's going to move in a random direction. Well, I'm going to go back down to the guys. Then. And I'm going to tell them that I saw this humongous shark over in that direction. Yeah, maybe we should stay uh, down at the sea level here where the shark doesn't go. Um, <clears throat> He's along the bottom of the ocean and uh, stay, out of, stay out of harm's way. So up, down. Pretty big shark. Right. Up, down, left, right. No, I guess this will be up, down, left, right. A B A B. Yeah, exactly. Blood code. Forward, backward. Okay. So, uh, I guess I'll have to roll two of these and see which direction it goes. So that oh, 
it's going to go one, two, three, right and right. So it goes right 10 feet. Uh, oops. And then it's going to go right. Wow, 10 feet. It still does not pay. Uh, Sprock, are you, are you, did you go down um, towards the guys and to tell them what you found? Or yeah, you... that's what I did. I said I was going to go down and tell them what I found. Okay. Um, all right. Lone Star is telepathically relaying everything to everyone. Oh, so you can connect to him telepathically? Yeah, because he's a shark. I can still telepathically connect to him. This shark is about, 40 feet about halfway of where Sprock was about 40 feet 40 feet above um so he does not see you he's swimming around just kind of churning um I'll make you guys spin for his movement um so when you hear Lone Star in your heads you hear like this deep sexy voice trying to be all subtle to you right Drake is going to say, oh, should we kill the shark? Or what? Um, Tevrit is going to is going to start to need air. And if he doesn't get it soon, he's going to have to roll for a constitution save. At some Lone point. Star will uh, do the swap. That's only if Tevrit. Tevrit, are you going to explain? I, I, need, I need oxygen. I will, so, I will take the, the hose. I'll, I'll give him the swap. But you can't, you know, you're underwater. So what is it that you do to express well, that? We, we you, move the nozzle from one to the other. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna breathe air through his mouth. That's we, when Lone Star was telling me about this, who had discussed, just tap me and tell me, like point to your mouth, and I'll swap the uh the magical one on top of you. Mm, sounds nice. Okay. So uh, Drake is, star can hold his breath for two minutes. Drake is going to look at Sprock and, and he's going to point at his new belt he found. And he's going to be like, this is awesome, this thing I found. <laughs> um, watch this. Uh, and he's going to start to walk. And he only goes about four. <laughs> it's about, about 10 feet because he's underwater and he's stupid. But he he goes about 10 feet towards the shark, but, but he doesn't, um, that's it. Um, what would you guys like to do? <clears throat> I think we're at a pretty big disadvantage fighting a shark. What does that belt look like? It um, looks like a, like a, you know that dwarven uh, belt that you had? Yeah, is that? It, it looks similar to that like similar craftsmanship mm. um but it's, it's far far better i see it's mm. a new belt he won he obviously you know i thought drake didn't like magic <laughs> items he didn't until he found this belt <laughs> until he found this belt and then he gave it a try and he's like i kind of like this thing hey i now i get what they're saying about those magic items and that's so bad when you got them working for you. <laughs> so uh let's follow Drake. Let's see what this belt can do. Um Drake is gonna move towards the center here and sort of wave up his hand like this. <laughs> and I gotta do I gotta find a giant shark. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty it's a pretty big shark though. <laughs> yeah, I know. That thing's pretty uh, terrifying. I know, I, and I think I think what I'll do uh, is I'll have. Well, you know what? I have. To, I guess I'll just roll on the on the uh, uh, website, so it's just obviously there. Because I don't want to. Drake is Drake. Um, he's a beast. So let's uh, let's see. He's gonna he's gonna start going his. Hey, he's gonna yell underwater. I don't know how far though the yelling can sound. He's just say, "Hey, come here! I want to show you my belt." 
And he looks back and kind of like through that through that hole, smiles at, at Lone Star of the group. Come here. Um, and the shark is going to see bubbles and he's going to swim over and investigate. Um, and he's going to see uh, Drake. And they're going to sort of float there for a second. Does anyone want to do anything? Um, Just waiting for action. I'm going to reach into my bag I'm holding and Mike, roll a d20. Um, 14. I'm going to pull out a cloak and hand you a cloak and telepathically say, thank you for trusting me that I would give you this air. Thank you, sir. Palace blesses you. What kind of, what kind of cloak is that? Just a plain cloak. Just like a normal non-magical item. Does it have some cool colors that I look badass? It has three yellow lightning bolts across the back of it. I do like lightning bolts. Okay, so the giant shark is going to attack. Uh, roll for initiative, everyone. Oh, hell yeah. Nine. So Tevrit got a nine? Yeah. Where is where is my boy here? Sprock, what'd you get? Sorry, right, which roll? Uh, mm, 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 what saving? Uh say that again. What saving roll? Oh no, it's, it's uh, initiative. Oh. Uh where's my initiative? Here we go. Twenty. Not all right. I got a natural 20. Not a natural 20. 18 plus dirty 20. So Sprock, oh, you have a higher dex than me, probably. Sprock got an 18. Um or Sprock got a 20. 20. And then Chris got a 20 as well. 20 with a star above it. And then uh Tever got a nine. Drake, unfortunately for him, he got a fucking five. And uh the shark. Got a 19. You like that. Uh, okay. So I think the shark is going to. Well, Chris, you go first. Fuck. Um, hold on. Let me check one thing. Um, I am going to use up my breath of air. That I have to cast a spell. Okay. Is this and something that has to be casted uh as you say it verbally? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. casting my a ver a spell with a verbal component, so I'm using my air underwater. Underwater. Okay. And I'm casting fairy fire on this shark. It needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Shark. DC 16 is my mm -hmm. save. How much how much damage does this shark have? Wow, that's okay. Um a DC, a deck saving throw? Yes. That's easy. Uh oof, 19. Yep, you save, so nothing happens. Oh, wow. Thank you for that though. Um acknowledged. Uh Sprock, you're up. Are you a shark? I'm a shark. Shark shark, shark on shark violence. Shark be shark. And, and I'm going to move uh, 15 feet closer towards the shark. And right. okay. bonus action, um, temp HP on myself, and that's it. Okay. Um, I'm on your back, so I come with you. No, I'm going to swim off of you. I'm going to jump off of you. Uh, Go on my own. Sprock, what's your deal? Uh, well, I guess I'll try and bite this guy. I like that. I like that. Melee weapon attack, plus four to hit, reach five feet, one target hit. Okay. 
I'm going to rage immediately. It's like the I can't even wait to say it. Okay. You know how cool this is? You're gonna have two fucking barbarians. Does a nine hit? It's gonna be so sick. Does a nine hit? Yeah. I really hope so. Uh no, no, that does not hit. Damn. I get advantage though because I'm within five feet of one of my other players. You do. Come on, baby. Wait, what? No, zero. It says the shark, the pack tactics. The shark has advantage on attack rolls against. Oh, nice. The yeah. At least oh, one man. of the shark's allies is within five feet of the creature, and it isn't isn't incapacitated. Right. I forgot you were a shark for a second. Unfortunately, though, I rolled instead a nine or <laughs> an eight. So nothing worse. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you can do? You want to? You have a bonus action sometime. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what I can bonus action as a shark. Uh, I'm gonna swim around its head and confuse it, <laughs> or maybe not its head. I'm gonna swim around to the back of it. So the shark is Which going one? to do is the shark is going to ignore you. Oh, actually, you know, let's roll for this. Um, uh, Jake, roll me a two sided die. A one, um, it is going to keep you in mind, and a, a zero, it's going to go with its initial attack on Drake. Uh, it doesn't have a D2 on the game? That sucks. It does, too. Where? Oh, yeah, it doesn't. Wow, that's fucked up. Flip a coin. I guess Just you can do a more. D4 even odd. Yeah, I did a D4 and it's even, so. All right, so it stays with Drake. Um, all right, he's going to attack Drake. And Drake, unfortunately, did not have enough time to rage. So, Damn it. Uh, and the attack is going to be a... <laughs> Drake dies before he can rage. Yeah, an 18. Does an 18 hit Drake? Probably. Uh, Ooh, what if it's a tie? Is it a tie? Tie that goes hits. Tie it goes hits. Oh, it hits. Okay, so it yeah. hits. Drake is going to take a rough uh, amount of damage. Um, three, wow, 3d10 plus 6. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's the barbarian. Um, here we go. Ooh, that's a 1 plus a 9. Great, that's 10. Plus a four, 14, plus a 20. Wow, Drake, not good. Drake takes 20 damage, but uh, that doesn't really matter because he's got so much other shit. So 20 damage, I like that. All right, Drake is going to rage immediately um, into a frenzy. He's going to do a frenzy rage. Ooh. Um, and he's going to sort of look back at Sprock and he's going to blow him a kiss. He's going to just watch this. And he's going to wink at uh, Tevrid. He's going to say, and he's going to yell. I don't know if you can hear it. He's going to sell, let's rage. And he's going to take out. Rage. Yeah. He's going to take out his, uh, his great axe. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to run over to the fucking uh great shark and he's going to attack um so i gotta click on the rage so he has a frenzy he has a frenzy uh you can melee attack as a bonus action each of your turns so that means he gets an extra attack but as a uh barbarian i think you get two attacks period you get two attacks per attack so you actually get four attacks right that's how that works no. So what are you? So you frenzy raged. Yeah. Um, so you get a bonus action attack, right? Right. If that bonus action is just one attack, it's a, it's not the attack action again. When you make your first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly, giving advantage. And okay. All right, so he's going to attack, um, and he's going to just absolutely rape this guy. 
Uh, Absolutely that's reckless. Why, that's why I've been eating pineapple for you, Drake. Uh, yeah. So a 25 is going to hit. And he's going to deal this guy uh, 14 damage. Damn. Uh, and then he's going to attack again as a bonus action. Um, a 16 hits and he's going to deal 17 damage. And uh, he's going to kind of look at his belt and he's going to say, you like that? You like that? Um, do you like that? And kind of like yelling at, uh, at Tempered, he's going to say, I suggest you get involved here, boy. Um, you know, the reef shark starts to get like a little mini half chub. Now, <laughs> during the rage, um, during the rage, it says plus two melee damage. Yeah, all all attacks you deal two extra damage to. So does that? But how does that? I, I don't know where to click that on my on the thing. So I I deal four extra damage then, right? Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna write minus four. Um, is that it though? So when so Mike, because because Drake has no armor, it's just his skin. Um, he has uh resistance to all bludgeoning and piercing damage is what 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 a uh a barbarian does when he attacks it says here you can attack twice instead of once when you attack your attack action yeah so when you for your normal action you do two attacks yeah and then when you frenzy you can take a single attack as a bonus action uh, so you get three next, attacks but next time well. yeah next turn you get three attacks Okay. All right. And just the, the rage, the rage just gives you it's strength like checks and plus two damage. And immunity and immunity and, and resistance. resistance to bludgeoning and piercing right. damage. Piercing, flashing. Okay. So essentially, you can pretty much rage and jump off a building and live. Well, to non magical. Yeah, non magical. Those. Um, so that's my uh, Tevrit. You should go. All right, I'm. I'm. We're we're raging, baby. I will rage as well. Get all fucking hopped up on steroids and go after this fucker. <laughs> and I will go after him with my battle axe, which um, I have in my back pocket. Um, Chris, it's the belt of fire giant strength. Oh. I was thinking you uh, went up to Storm Giant Strength. No, <laughs> I thought you or or, or even Cloud. I was like Drake has forty five damage. For... Well, I was like, okay, Drake has a thirty five strength now. <laughs> no, all right, all right, all right. Back to Tevrin. Tevrin, what would you like to do? I'm, a rage. I'm, I'm raging and I'm going after him with my attack. Um, so I guess I get double attack, right? You will get a double attack on this turn. The ear, so you get to attack, and as a bonus action, you get to attack. Next turn, if you'd like to frenzy, you can once once a rage, you can frenzy rage, and you can um, no, any any time you rage, you can go into a frenzy. Okay, the and frenzy for the duration of the rage, you can um, take a bonus action attack every turn. Why would I not want a frenzy rage? Because at the end you gain a level of exhaustion. Yeah, you so like that means your your like speed goes down in half, and then if you get another one, then you're you suffer and suffer. But you know. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rage. I like that. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna double attack this little fuck with my battle axe. With your battle axe, baby. I'm yeah. gonna put you. So you swim over, and you hit him. Go for Damn, it. That axe says plus nine. That's a 24. What axe? Oh. Wait, you, you got, oh, you took an axe from, from Chris? No, I I had an axe. Oh, I gave you a magic a magic axe. Yeah, because I'm a badass. And all barbarians have, I had to kill some bitches to get that axe. I'm not sure if I gave you the right one, but we'll just go with it. Well, it's quite big. 
Uh, it's oh, a berserk. Why? Twenty-four. That seems to hit. Twenty-four hits. Uh, so three plus two. Oh no, wait. It's a plus six. One d eight plus six plus two. Yeah, that's the damage. So you roll a d6 and add two to that for what your total damage is. Then what's the plus six? You see, it says plus six plus two. One d8 plus six plus I'm raging, which I get plus two for. Yeah. So I do 11 now. Yeah, so 11. Uh oh. Wait, you have a. Battle axe that does a d6? I don't think so. The battle axe is 1d8 plus 6. Oh, okay. I thought battle axe was 1d8. All right, Jamie. Excuse me. Give me a I'm looking at it right here. I don't. No, I know. I'm just. You can see my guy, right? Oh, it's doing one handed. Yeah, one handed d8. Is that different? I was thinking of a great axe. Never mind. Ignore me. Um, all right, so there's 11, and I'll hit I'll attack again for my second action. Uh that one's another 25. That hits. And that is a six, so that's 12. That's 14 more damage. Oh, uh, we've we've lost him. Do you have a shield? I do not. Oh, okay. Do I have a shield? I, for whatever reason, I've got two battle axes. I gave you a normal battle axe, and then I guess you, whatever. Um, what'd you get? Uh, I got 11 and 14. So 11 for the damage? Yeah. And 14 for the hit? No, a, a damage. Oh, okay. Twice. Okay, um, it's Chris's turn. Oh, so I'm going to swim the rest of the way up there. And I'm going to punch this guy twice in the face. Because I can't cast any spells. So <laughs> first one misses. So three plus eight, 11. I assume that misses. How high are you up? Like about the same height as Drake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, and that definitely hits. That's a 27. Yeah, that hits for sure. So that's uh, nine thunder damage. Nine thunder. And he has disadvantage on all attacks against anyone except me. Okay. Um. And what's my, uh, that's it. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, Sprock. Sprock's coming through spells and stuff. Yeah, I was coming through spells actually, but I don't no. know what I can. You can listen, uh, Jake, as you, as you progress, you can just add in a spell that you want to do. You don't have to, you know, if you found one that you want to do that you can do, you, you just say it. Okay. Uh well I'm still like swimming around. Where am I? Am I on this side? You are you are Can 40 I, feet above us. Yeah, right. In front of him, sort of. You try but I'm to, also swimming around to the back. Yes, you were trying to swim around to sort of back. Yeah. So I'm gonna try another bite because I can and I still you get have a, you'll have a bite with um advantage because he is not facing you. Great. Love that. Mm -hmm. Does a 20 hit? 20 does hit. Damn right. It is. It's uh, four piercing damage. Oh, how wonderful. Four piercing. Four piercing. Okay. Take a nice little bite out of his dorsal fin. He does not like that. 
He can breathe underwater, though. So. That's great. All right, well, I guess that's my move for this turn. It's the shark's turn. He's not happy with that. <clears throat> and he's going to attack on a D roll of a one through six. Uh, Chris, you are a one. Uh, Jake, you are a uh, two and four. And wait, Lone Star's a one, two. Uh, Teverett's a, a three, four. And Sprock will be a five, six. What about Drake? A, a, I mean, a, a Drake. Uh, it's five, six. It's a three. So Teverett. Um, Teverett is a three, four. So he's going to attack. With disadvantage. Uh, with disadvantage. Um, a nine plus. This is brutal. Nine plus to hit. This is... All right. Uh, 17. And... Ooh. Uh, three, uh, 17 and a 12. 12 does not hit. You're at disadvantage. Uh, yep. He misses. He take big jaws come down like a megalodon on you, and it tries to get you but it it bites at you and there's a tooth missing and it just misses your skin and it bounces away lucky this megalodon doesn't go to a dentist um and it's actually tevert's turn now now we're now we're pissed you don't come after me dog we we go in ham i'm going to, i'm going to attack twice First attack, we're going to go at him with a tw dirty 20. All right. Uh, this Are you attacking with a Berserker Battle Axe? Yeah. All right. So you're attuned to it, which I'll let you I'll let that pass. Um, but when you – it has negative features. Did you read that? The axe is, is cursed and become and becoming attuned to it gives you a curse. As long as you remain, this is why I gave it to you because I, I knew you weren't going to read it. You're cursed. Um, <laughs> you are unwilling to disadvantage on attack rolls with weapons other than this one. Yeah. So you have. I can't hear or see people. You have, <laughs> whenever a hostile creature damages you while you have the axe in your possession, you must make a DC uh, 15 wisdom saving throw. That hasn't happened yet. While the berserk, while, while berserk, you must use your action each round to attack the creature nearest to you with the axe. So that means friendly also. Um, if you can make six extra attacks as part of the attack action, you use those extra actions moving to attack the next nearest creature after you uh fell your your current target if you have multiple possible targets you attack one at random you are berserk until you start uh your turn with no creatures within 60 feet of you that you can see or hear so you're fucking you're going absolutely crazy right now. and drake is sort of like hard just looking at you he's like boy this guy's going going raging like berserk chef um but you I should, like I should, <laughs> I should just use the regular battle axe yeah, well, you chose wrong. So, anyway, um, <laughs> so that's what happens when you let the DM choose your magic weapon. Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, he's a level eight barbarian. We get a lot of XP when we kill him. Yes, it's true. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> are you? I still get to Lone Star. Is, are you, is Lone Star wearing the the grass armor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> interesting all right <laughs> you gave him time to uh set that up as his armor he definitely has the adamantine grass armor only the front though no it's only I on the guy, back i knew a guy who wore grass armor yeah so the the back is a normal like 10 ac because mm. it's just grass or whatever grass armor is <laughs> interesting yeah. All right. So, Tavrin, go ahead. All right. I'm double attacking this big ass fucking shark, and he about to get owned. Uh, I already hit, so I'm gonna roll that. That's twelve. That's 14, fourteen more damage. Okay. And I'll attack again. Does seventeen hit? 
17 hits. All right. And plus 15 more damage. Wow. And if you want it because you're raging, are you frenzy raging or just raging? Just raging. Okay. So let me make sure I'm not. Um, I thought I think I thought that a uh, giant shark would be perfect for getting you um, accustomed to being a barbarian. I mean, my attack I can do two attacks. So shark, I is looking, the, shark is looking fucked up. His uh, I, still, I still have a bonus action. Oh, okay. I mean, can't I attack again for my bonus action? Sure can. Yeah. There's Not a 15 hit. Huh? 15? 15 hits. Oh, you're about to get boned. Oh, no. All right. That's a natty one. That comes out to nine, though. <laughs> um, nine damage. Uh, Drake is going to um, attack as well. Um, 17 plus a, that's going to hit. And I don't think this guy's going to last too much longer. Does he showcase his belt when he attacks? Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, check out this belt, baby. <laughs> Boom. Check out this belt, baby. Boom. Yeah. And uh, so he hits him twice. And the third one, two plus a, two, but the, the third one does not hit. Um, but he deals him. I see you. Uh, the first one hits and he just takes his axe and he crashes it right into this, uh, the creature's skull, splitting it into in open. Yeah. And then he takes the axe out and he bites down on whatever right. meat's in yeah. there and it spews. But instead of spewing all over his, uh, his body like it normally does, it sort of washes away. And he's kind of confused a little bit by that because he's an idiot because um, he's underwater. <laughs> and he kind of like wants it, but he wants it. So he kind of scoops it back over, <laughs> um, tries to bathe himself in the blood. And uh, the, the uh, shark is dead, but there's now blood spilt in the water. Um, everyone roll me a d20. Um, this is going to be a perception check for the other giant sharks that are in the vicinity. Um, and there are three people here. So roll me a perception check. Um, give me a perception check, a d20, everyone, plus three. It's a d20, perception, plus three. Ooh. Why, do get, why do you get plus three? 24. Do you know why we get plus three? I don't. <clears throat> You're going to get a piece of pizza. Sounds good. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. It's all good. All right. So what'd you roll for the uh number one, two, and three for the other sharks in the vicinity? Um, these are going to be um what were the perception checks? I got a 24. That's not good for you. 24 is not good. No, because you're rolling for the perception of the giant sharks in the vicinity. 
13. Uh, that one does not sense you. 24, another shark. Uh, this carcass is now, I think they, they don't float, actually. Another shark in the vicinity sees it, senses you. Um, Mike, your shark does not, it's still in the, in the area. Um, Chris, what about you? Did you roll D20? Yeah, I got a five on the die. My perception is a seven. No, no, no. The, you, you roll a perception for the, for the shark. Um, no. I just made you roll. I rolled a five. Okay. Um, so another shark comes in into play. Um, as the shark comes over, um, you see next to it two smaller sharks. Um, Sprock sees this. And give me a perception check, tre tre Teverit. Perception. Let's look at, wow, 19, 18. Okay, you see a little bit past these sharks, um, there is a, what looks like to be right where this, well, actually right in front of the sharks, it looks like to be coming down, something coming down from the um, from the top, from I guess the water above. Shadow. Shadow opening up onto the floor. And it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, this shark is going to flip over. It's dead. But Teverit is still in berserk mode. So let's go back to Tevrit. Um, I've, already used all my, I've already used all my attacks. Right. These things are huge. Oh, right in your turn. Oh, okay. So that means, so I guess that means that if, if um, you, in your turn, you still have to use all your, if you kill a bad guy, you still have to hit Lone Star, that type of thing. Right. If I had if I had an extra attack, I would have had to have used it, but I've used my third one. Okay. Um, so we are still in rage for another eight turns. Uh Tevert and Drake. I'll try to keep track of that. Um and there are sharks coming, and they are sensing the blood in the water. And they come over and they swim. It's free roam now. There's no more initiative. They swim past the shadow that's building in the, in the ground, and they just start swimming and churning and eating this uh, this this dead carcass of this of this uh, fish. They don't even give a shit that you're there, um, and they're eating. And Drake is going to look at you guys and say, he's going to turn over to Lone Star, and he's going to say, "Should I told you the belt was." Good, right? I'll telepathically tell him back, that belt is amazing. Your swings are fantastic. Thanks. I won it at the gladiator place. <laughs> nice. You have to show me. I know. Um, and Lone Star, you are going to need air. And uh, Drake's going to take his thing out, and he's going to give you a little bit of air. I'm going to telepathically tell Drake, no, hold on to it. And I'm going to cast air bubble on myself. Ooh, zing. All it's right. only a somatic component. Okay. So, so air, I get a bubble of air around my head for 24 hours. That's hilarious. Um, okay. So Drake is going to... So Lone Star, give me a perception check since you're a shark over there and the other sharks kind of see that you're, you're, you're the weaker link because you're the smaller shark, but they're still devouring this other shark. Um, give me a perception check. Since you're uh, a 10 to 12. Um, well, no, uh, no, I'm sorry, a Sprock needs to do that. A perception check? Yeah. Say 27. You see um, this item sort of slowly fall, uh, sink. It's sinking. Um, and as it sinks down towards the ground, the shadow is getting bigger and bigger, and you look at it and you see and recognize that it is an egg. 
It's a what? An anchor. Okay. Um, as you look on, these the, the sharks are devouring this uh, this beast, and in the middle of the devouring, this anchor lands plop on the floor, and there's a chain that uh, connects the anchor to what you can only presume to be some sort of ship or boat above. Um, and there's, as you look up, you can, you can't really tell because it's 100, uh, 200 feet, or I guess you're 150 feet because you're still 40 feet in the air um, above you. Okay. The, the anchor's above me. Mm -hmm. The anchor has hit the ground. Ah, but the chain goes up above the me. The chain goes up, yes. Uh, I'm going to go swim towards that chain and investigate. You guys got these sharks for a minute, right? Yeah, we Ooh. got this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm swimming up. Interesting, interesting. All right, so the sharks are not done devouring yet. Um, on an 18 or above, they would be done devouring, but that'll be different next turn. Let me uh, grab the item I need here real quick. Um, you will go to the top, um, or you're on your way to the top, rather. Oops, didn't mean to do that either. Um, and well, oh, baby, gravity thing here is crazy. Sorry. Um, so you're swimming up, and as you get to the top, you see that there is um, there's another shadow uh, above. You can see that the um, something is floating on the water and you can only imagine that it's a boat of some kind. Um, you are, you can use all of your, Jake, you can use all of your, your movement? Yeah, I'm gonna go up as far as I can. So okay. 80 with the bonus. So 80, 80 with the bonus? Yeah. So you're actually 80 feet from the, from the uh, sea, sea, sea level, I guess. Um, and you can clearly see that there is a ship um, with an anchor. And the anchor is the thing that you saw land next to you. Um, and you're that's you're just floating there. I can't make out anything about the boat or read anything on the boat. Or... It's, a rather, it's a rather large boat. Um, you don't. I don't know. Are you familiar with sh with uh, ship? Are you like a What's your your backstory? You're you're an underdog. So yeah, I'm not that familiar with ships now, but I can read stuff. Yeah, but you're, <laughs> you're, you're 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 smart and knowledgeable. Give me a um. Give me a, a, his, a history. Yeah, give me a history check. Fourteen. Um, you are aware that ships are used for fishing, for trade, and some are pirates. You don't know and can't make out what this one's for, um, but you do know that it might be weird. You do know that an anchor means that the ship is doing something. You don't know exactly what the people on the on the on the crew are, are doing. <laughs> you know that they are stationed there. You're smart enough to put that together. Okay. Um, I don't know how you if, if you can communicate that down to the guys who are going to have to. Um, well, they're still free roam because the sharks haven't haven't met them yet. Um, what are the what would you you guys like to do? Battle sharks or are these sharks coming towards us? Or they're eating this thing right in front of us? Right now in a in a in a little second, I'm gonna do a roll to see if they are done devouring the carcass and then they are gonna do their perception rolls. So it's up to you as to what you like to do. If you want to try to 
float away um, discreetly? Do you want to try to battle them? Do you want to go up? You can go left, right, up, down, any way you want, diagonal. You can. So is going to touch Drake's belt and cast you identify. Can, you can say "fuck this boat" and go off into the into the ocean. It's up to you. So what do you want to do? So what did you say you wanted to do? I'm going to cast identify in Drake's belt. On, on Drake's what belt? On Drake's belt, yeah. Drake's belt is. Um, you know that Drake's belt is identify just means you know what it, what it is. Yeah, well, I know what it is. Yeah. Okay, Drake's belt um, is the belt of fire giant strength. While wearing the belt, your strength score changes to twenty five. The item has no effect on you if your strength without the belt is equal to or greater than 25. So he's, he's, he was almost there anyway. But uh, I'll put my hand on Drake's shoulder and telepathically tell him, I'll get you a nicer belt. And he says, <laughs> ah, ah, thank you. Um, and he looks over at his barbarian friend, uh, Tre Trevitt, and he says, what shall you? Shall we slay or what? We're underwater. Can you can it's you still raging? Let's kill, baby. <laughs> All right. Um always still raging. I love okay. Drake's raging voice. These guys have devoured the shark. There's a medium shark. The medium shark is gonna have that. This shark, there's one giant shark, and there's that shark. So um shark one shark two shark three shark one's initiative is going to be 15 should i you guys want to re-roll your initiatives or should we keep you the same i think we should re-roll Ooh, shark two is two re -roll. and shark 12 okay i'm okay rolling again okay uh four Ooh, 19 sprock is four lone star 19 Shark one is 15. Uh, Mike, what'd you get? 12. 15. Uh, Sprock, I mean, uh, uh, ooh, Drake, 18. Nice. One, two punch there. Um, followed by shark two, no, shark one. And then uh, Tevrit, who's actually an easy name for me to remember, um, gets a 12. Shark. Uh, no, that's it. I'm done, I'm done with them. Uh, shark 15. Tevert tied. So Tevert goes first with Shark 3. And then Shark 1. This is going to get confusing. Um, no, Shark 2 goes there. And then Sprock goes last. All right. Um, okay, large Shark goes last. Okay. Um, Lone Star, what would you like to do? Oh, Sprout, you're, you're 40 feet above these sharks. Yeah. I'll telepathically tell Drake, here, let me help you out since you only have that Fire Giant Strength belt. And I will cast um, Fairy Fire in between two of them so that I can hit two people with the spell. It's a 20-foot cube. So say the front two guys um, have to make a deck save. DC 16. The front two sharks? Yeah. Okay. Um, have to do a deck save of DC 16. I think they have nothing. Yep. Um, that's a 13 and a fail. And a one. Natural one. So that's they one both... Start shining a bright yellow color, and everyone has um, advantage on any attacks against them. Okay. These... Any attack roll against the affected creature has advantage if the attacker can see it. So and you can't benefit from being invisible. So this shark, the first two sharks. So, yeah, bo both two sharks. Everyone has advantage on all attacks. All right. Advantage on shark one and advantage on big shark number two. Yep. Okay. 
and I'll pat Drake on the shoulder and say, go get him, big boy. Uh, <laughs> Drake is going to come up, swim over sort of uh, to, to shark one. Um, still raging. Shark is, uh, shark. Drake is going to attack with his, I wonder like, uh, he's too stupid not to use it. Now uh, he's going to take his great axe and he's going to attack with a, a 21 hits, but he has, he's got advantage on that. Um, and so a 27 also hits and he'll do 15 damage on shark one. Shark one not looking so good already. Uh, not, I mean, that's not true, but. All right, so he's got advantage on all three attacks, I guess. Yeah. So that hits, ooh, natural 20, that's a crit. Wow. Nice. That's crazy. So I do, wow, 2d12, that's fucking nuts. Uh, 21 damage right there. It's 21, and then he's gonna do one more. Um, that's 27, that hits, and... To 15. So Drake in that in that attack, um, he attacked six. Well, he attacked six times as he had advantage. Um, he did 51 damage. With the crit? Oh, yeah, with the crit. That, that, that was the 21 uh damage. Nice. That would have been two, it would have been 2d12 plus 10. Fucking nice. Crazy. The shark, he cuts off a shark's fin and he looks over at uh uh, Tevert, and he's like, see what I'm saying? <laughs> see what I'm saying? <laughs> and just as he does, uh, Shark One is going to attack Drake, um, trying to, he's he's uh, not doing very well. He's going to try to attack Drake with a bite. Um, ooh, wow, natural one again. Um, and he misses. And he, uh, nothing special happens. He just misses. Um, and it's Tevert's turn. Still in rage mode. I'm going after the big shark. And I'm attacking. Okay. So you're going to go skip shark one. You're going to go straight up to shark two. Big shark, baby. Okay. Right in the center of all three of them. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Don't give a fuck. I'm coming in hot. I'm swinging this cursed <laughs> battle axe as hard as I can. I'll be chopping some fins off here myself. First attack, I believe a 27 hits. Uh, yes. Okay. And that is 12 damage. Yes. Okay. Second attack, I believe a 26 hits. Yep. And that is another 13 damage. And I will use my bonus action to attack again. And, ooh, ooh, that's gross. 11. Um, I rolled a two. <laughs> yeah, that does not hit. What was the damage that you gave to him? 12 on 11? Um, is there a way to check my... Yeah. Did you, get, did you click on it? Do you have the attack log? Or... Did you roll on your, how'd you roll it? No, I rolled on this thing. The last one was 13 and the one before that, I can't really see it. Was 12. Was 12. Okay. So, so 12, you get plus two on that. So 14 and 13. Oh shit. Yeah. I get plus two on my three things too. It's, it's wow. Okay. Um, so that you, you dealt him Fucking third, uh, four. No, it's fourteen and, and fifteen. Wow. Okay. Where'd you get? where you? You did twelve. You did twelve damage plus two, and then you did thirteen damage plus two. Right? Is that? No. Other. other so. Thirteen plus fourteen is the total oh, damage. Oh. Oh. And then you do plus four on that. I, I already that? added. I already added them. Oh. Okay. Okay, for now on, I'll just take your word for it. Yep. Um, you did some damage to him. He's pissed off at you. Um, Shark 3 is going to attack you. And he's going to attack you with 
a fucking 28 that hits. Maybe. <laughs> not sure that hits. Wow. Thank you for not asking. <laughs> Um, he's going to deal you 3d10 plus 6 piercing damage. Four. I, don't, I, don't, I don't take piercing. No, you have resistance. Oh, you get, yeah, you take half. 13, uh, 18, and then you got 24, so 12 piercing damage. Sure. Bring it. You think, you think I'm scared of 12? Um, you are raging though. You you did you do get oh you missed it. Um lone uh who's who is this? Oh shark shark number uh big shark is now gonna attack you, Mike. Wait a minute. I get I I didn't get a throw a uh saving throw or you don't, need, you don't need it. You just attack. Um so shark two is now gonna attack you. Um, does 19 hit you? Yeah. Oh boy. This guy's not gonna last. Uh 12. Oof. 21 plus 6. So 27 divided by 2 rounded up. Uh, whatever that is. Uh 14 more damage. So 26 damage total. Okay. Um, it is Sprock's turn. Chef, come on. Uh, I'm going to come back down and uh, attack this big guy from the back. You would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> okay. I may guess a 10 doesn't hit. Does a 16 hit? Um, 16, uh, 16 hits. Great. He's going to take five piercing damage. Okay. I got it. Um, all right. So the big one takes five. And this is five. Okay. Uh, Lone Star, you're up. Um, does that one in front of Drake, Shark One, look fairly damaged? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to swim up next to Drake, and I'm going to need that Shark to make me a constitution saving throw, DC 18. The Shark, the, 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 yeah. the, the smaller Shark, a constitution? Yeah, constitution. Wow, Sharks have good constitution. All right. Oof, natural one. Jeez. Okay, yes. So wow. I'm using my necklace of imprisonment. So I'm going to swim up next to Drake and I'm going to pat him on the shoulder and tell him in his head, you don't need my help. Let me take care of this. And I'm going to pull that shark into my necklace and feed it to my purple worm. And then tell my purple worm, feast up, my boy. And then tell Drake, go get the big boy now. Slap him on the ass. All right, uh, Purple Worm. Well, we'll come back to Purple Worm in a minute. Because <laughs> Purple Worm has been trying to get out. Um, well, you know, you've been taming him. You've been taming. We'll, we'll see what happens. Well, this is my way of trying to tame him. I've been trying to talk to him, and then now I'm trying to feed him. All right, so Purple Worm, give me, um, give me an animal handling uh, check. See if Purple Worm receives that uh training minus one yeah this is big um i have inspiration and i'm cashing it in <laughs> you want that so bad oh absolutely Ooh, um 16 all right purple worm receives one training notch I don't know exactly how many there you're going to require, but you are one step closer to being like a dune a dune rider of some kind. All right. Um, so you fed. I'm going to write purple notch, a one training notch. Fed giant medium shark to purple worm. That's a note I have to remember. All right. Uh, Drake's turn. Drake is going to turn his attention to his friend um, Tevrit. 
and Tev and he's gonna say, "Let's beat this bitch," but he's gonna say it in that like in that in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, remember, you remember he's like just yelling it's like an orc and a half orc is just yelling and then inside you can't even see anything he's yelling so hard there's so much like fog in his mask you know this guy means business so he's gonna attack three times um well i should just do it on here but that hits that's a 10 plus a, a 10 i believe um a plus a 13 that hits i'll do the other ones um oh he has advantage too right all, all attacks have advantage, right? Yeah. On number three. On the big one, the closest one. Oh, no, yeah. I, I, I um, hit the uh, fairy fire on number one and number three. Okay. So the, I, I thought you hit. Good thing for. That's just if you hit the big shark with uh, that's that okay. spell. That's okay. So good thing Good thing for, um, for me. Um, I hit him three times anyway because of this uh, great axe um, and also this belt. So I'm going to attack this guy. He's going to get um, 16 plus 13 plus fucking um, 15 damage. Um, he's not doing very well. Um, that's what he's going to do. He's still raging. Um, Mike and... Uh, Drake and Tevert are going to be at six uh, rounds left of, of Rage. Um, it is now Te uh, Shark 1's turn. Shark 1 is dead. Um, Tevert, it's your turn. Rage! <laughs> Attacking, baby. Big Shark, I'm coming at you. Oh, Natty 1. I don't think that hits. Okay. okay. But you have no advantage. You get to you'll get to attack, but um, with a natty one, um, what are you wearing? A breathable? Is he wearing a breathable suit, Chris? Um, Peverett? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the breathable suit with that hit uh, takes a crack in the face and it starts to leak water in. Uh, next turn, you will be submerged as if you were not wearing the suit at all. You can try to repair it, but you can't repair it underwater. Well, that's not a good swing. All right. Well. I'll deal with that next round. I'm going to use my second attack. And that's a dirty 20. Okay. That hits. Uh, and that will be for 13 damage. And then I will use my bonus action to attack again. Uh, 22, that hits. And 13 plus 14. 27 damage. Um, okay. I deleted the other guy, but here. Consistent How damage. How much was it? 27. Okay, 27 to the big shark. Big shark. Oh, boy. Let's see where he's at now. Thank God for calculators, because this is... How much did you do? 27. Did you add the extra? I always add the extra. <laughs> Big Shark looks like shit. Big Shark has a cut on his top torso. His teeth are fucking flying out. There's blood spewing out all over the place. Um, shark 3 is the small guy accidentally deleted. He's going to come over and attack uh, Tevrit because you're the closest one. Sure. And he's going to bite you with a 9 plus a 5. So 14. It's a 14 hit. Fuck no, get out of here. All right, he bites you. Um, you're you're in such a rage that it chips one of the teeth. Um, shark, big shark is going to attack you now. Um, he's desperate and he's flailing on around. Uh, natural one, he bites down, <laughs> and accidentally hits um, the other shark. Other shark is going to take half the damage and I'm going to say it is 15 shark three and been dealt any damage yet he's going to take 15 damage uh sprock it's your turn uh i'm gonna do another pass to the back of this guy since i'm up here somewhere 
Mm, interesting. Well, he's he's hurting, right? Yeah. Does a fifteen hit? Um, a fifteen does hit. He gets seven piercing damage. Describe your kill. Oh, shit. Well, I kind of just like bit across the back of his neck, and it was hard enough to just rip half of his head open. He just starts bleeding guts, and like blood fills the ocean. <laughs> Drake finally gets coated in blood. Yeah. He's just. Drake try, tries to drink it in, but he's too stupid to realize he has a mask on and can't. can't put it. <laughs> he's just trying to, rubbing it on the stage. trying to lick, lick, lick the cover. Um, Brock's turn went well. Lone Star, you're up. <coughs> oh, um, so there's only uh, Shark Three left. Yeah, and he's um, no, I can make him smaller. Yeah, he's just the smaller of the of the. We haven't hit him yet at all, right? Yeah, he actually got. Um, he, he just had the fairy fire. fire. No, he had um, fifteen. He, the fifteen damage from the larger shark, who was trying to, he was in a, in a frenzy trying to, oh, trying to okay. stay alive, and he got a natural one. But he got, he got, oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to swim over towards that shark, um, tell him fifteen feet away, and I'm going to whip out a lightning lure. I need a strength save DC sixteen. I'm going to whip out a lure and say, "Get your ass over here, you little bitch." I like I like how you do that. Uh, so he needs to have a DC strength save. A strength save, the shark. Yep, that's big. Sharks are big with shark with with strength. There's an eighteen. Yep, that succeeds. So hey, nothing happens. My lightning flops around. Go shark. Go shark. Oh, no, you're no. you're afraid of me, aren't you? And that's my turn. Uh, Drake's gonna look at you and go, "I guess got you. I got you." Um, he's going to run over and he's going to take out his um, his storm boomerang and he's an idiot so he's going to throw it um, underwater <laughs> um, and on a strength I guess I'll have to roll for this a strength of an 18 plus. No, it'll be a 20, a 25 plus it'll hit. If it doesn't, it does not. He has advantage, right? He has advantage though. So first one was an eight. <laughs> oh my God, he got a 24. He throws this thing, it misses and it starts to float up. Because it's made out of wood. Um, and then he's going to take out his great axe, I guess, um, and attack him twice more um, with advantage. This is going to be a 23 and a natural one. So he is going to uh, hit him for the. Oh, no, that was disadvantage, right? No, the, he has advantage on everything. Yeah. All right. So he hits him twice then. Um, and how does he have that? That's such a good spell. It's a fairy fire. Oh, I yeah, fairy fire is fantastic. On it. Yeah, fairy fire is underrated and very awesome. I know. He, he gives, deals 21 and 13, and so I'm going to add two to that, so it's 23 and 16. This guy's not looking very good. It's now um, shark one died. It's now Tevert's turn. He's going to say, Tevert, end him. Do it. Do what you can. I want blood, baby. Battle axe to the face. A natty one. Another one. <laughs> I knew I have advantage. Yeah, you have I advantage. Know. Last time I had advantage and I rolled. Oh, on this one. Okay. Oh, a two. Okay. 11. I don't think that hits either. It's good though, because we don't we don't want to kill this guy too soon. So I'll use my bonus action to attack again. Oh boy. Did you hit him? No. 
Okay. You have two attacks, right? You have three attacks, and you have to yeah. use all the attacks because you're you're berserk right now and using the berserk right. attacks. So first, oh, so I had advantage. So uh, first one swung and missed. Second one, twenty one hits. Yep. And we're gonna give you a solid ten damage. Um. Okay, he is very fucked up. But not dead. All right, no. good. I will use bonus action. We sledgehammer to the fucking back of his head right here. <laughs> oh, another natty one. This is just not advantage. 21. That hits. Describe <laughs> your kill. Describe 15 your kill. damage. Hey, hey, hey. Describe your kill. That's his job. <laughs> well, I knew he was dead. Just he had one. He had one. Chops the head off of the shark and just sits there. And I, I hold it in my head. I squeeze the shit on the head. I'm, like, I'm a bitch. And and that's that's my kill. All right. I hold it to the head. I'm still carrying the head in my hand. Okay. There were three sharks that died. There's blood all over the place. Four sharks that died. Four sharks that died. There's blood all over the place. And um, everyone rolled me... Uh, 1d20 for the other sharks that are in the region. Um, each roll will attribute to two sharks. A 12. 11. Well, hold on. They have good perception. So a 12 plus a shark's perception makes it a 15. What's the other one? So two sharks come in. What's the what's your sprock? Eleven. Uh, fourteen. Two do not. And Mike. Twelve. Ooh, four more large sharks come in. Um, from each corner of the room. Um, Drake is enraged and he's a boner. Um, what would you guys like to do? There is no initiative. Um, these these sharks are coming over and they are eating. Um, shark number, they're going to swim over and eat shark number one, which is right, and I'll just draw him, uh, right over here. is going to tell everyone, let's go up to the boat. Leave these sharks to feast. If you want to kill them, stay and kill them, but then meet us at the boat. Um, Drake is going to look at Lone Star. Talos gives you his blessing. He's going to look at Lone Star. He's going to say, thank you for everything you've done. I'm going to stay down here, and I'm going to destroy everything. And he's going to hand, I'm... he's going to point up towards his boomerang, and he's going to say, you may have that if you find it. <laughs> I'm going to reach out my bag I'm holding and roll a d20. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Let's look around. <laughs> Should I roll a d20? Yeah, roll a d20. Uh, 10. You get a signet ring with a little Talos logo on it. A little classic Talos ring. I hand you Drake one. You take it. this and punch many of those fucking sharks in the face with it. He puts it on. He keeps his um and he says, and he says, uh, Tevrit, this is where I uh I have to find something under the water. I know I'm looking that I'm looking for. I bid you do. And he uh, runs uh, into a random direction and swims off. Um, and Give me says, that belt. He says, no. <laughs> and and uh, there is a long chain that hangs down from the boat um, that you guys may or may not get to. Um, or, I mean, you, you, you're at it, but... Uh, <clears throat> How would you guys like to proceed? I'm going to swim up to that boomerang. Um, you'll have to get up to the... Uh, the boomerang has floated up, so you can't quite see it yet. Um, but you do see that it's off, off the... You know, I'll let you... Give me a perception check. A dirty 20. All right. It is... Mm. Um, it is about 30 feet away from the boat okay right, 
I'm going to save this because I have a feeling like we're going to need it. Let me just write boat shark battle. Um, and I'll save this and this as one unit, I think, save object. All right. Um, you guys are ascending. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the shark's head on and grab the chain and start climbing up. The shark's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive fucking head. Look at. I've got massive shoulders. So, Teverett instead of swimming, is gonna fucking just climb this thing like it's his, like he's a fucking animal, which I really like. Um, I might even, that, that, I might even pull that boat down. I'm so strong. Uh, Sprock, what are you doing? Uh, going over. Well, that's not me. You can give me a ride. Yeah, I'm going to go over to Lone Star. Give him a ride. Is this you, Lone Star? You're over No, you're over here, right? Yeah. I'll point out where the uh, boomerang is and say, and tell him telepathically, hey, can you stop by that boomerang for me? Sure. It, that That's uh, Drake's. He wanted me to pick it up for him. Yeah, um, well, I grabbed it. All right, you grab his boomerang. Um, you are now floating. You are, Tevrit is climbing the rope and you are um, 30 feet away from the boat. Tevrit, you are, I would say, 20 feet underneath the boat as you, as you ascend. Um, let me change views here. And where are my saved objects here? Let me drop this down. Oh. All right, so we'll just get rid of that. This, um, come on, what happened here? You guys are floating in the water um, and there's a ship. And I, you know what? I'm going to have to draw the ship because I need you guys to be able to use it. Um, I don't know what this water thing is doing here. All right, so the ground is water. Um, Tevrit, you're still like 20 feet underneath it. Um, the ship is... that can you see that can you guys see this the ship sort of the, the, yeah the, the, the double-sided double-sided double dildo <laughs> <laughs> this is a mast with some warts <laughs> <laughs> this is a mast. Uh, these, uh, little handles <laughs> this is this okay um all right so This is the poo deck. I see the ship. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So you are Lone Star and Sprock are 30 feet away. And we will use the um, uh, how do I get this to go away? Go away. Lone Star is standing on Sprock's back, holding dorsal fin with one hand, like sitting there like a water skier, just sort of chilling. Boomerang in his other hand. Um, oops. All right, there you go. It was a matter of time until one of us wrote Sprock. <laughs> Sprock is still, Sprock just ran away from you trying to just destroy the, the ocean um, in his fit of rage. Uh, Mike, you are at five, 
five rounds, actually four rounds away from being not raged. Um, all right, Lone Star's over here with Sprock in shark form. Um, you guys are 30 feet, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You guys are actually over here. And so, so I think rage ends if you if you end your turn and you haven't attacked a hostile creature. All right, so you're done. And you're climbing up. Um, Sprock, give me a perception check. Yeah. I'll do it in a second. 20. Okay. You look over at the boat and you can see things that are what look like to be large birds are circling the ship. Okay. You don't give me a uh, Lone Star. You might, you're familiar with like birds and shit. Give me a um, nature check. Yeah. Uh, where's my nature? Uh, Ooh, uh, 12. Oh, 12 plus. I'm going to use my reaction to give myself five to that. So that's a 17. Because okay. of um, my uh, you... flash of genius. You know that they're not birds. Um, you can see. I feel like this is this is the time in my life where if I'm going to spend a little bit of money on descripts, what is it called descript.com? Describe. Describe.com, I, I would, but instead, I'm going to go to Wikipedia. <laughs> um, you look over and you see. This flying, big talons, big wings, uh, but it doesn't, you don't see a beak. It's weird, but you do see uh, breasts. Mm. Um, and there, there are about what you can make out to be a dozen or so. What? Breasts. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We love you, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so you see these <laughs> you see titties. <laughs> right. Big, big titties. Big old titties. Tig old bitties. Yeah. Tig old bitties. Um <laughs> uh, so when's the session that Jamie's gonna DM? Yeah. <laughs> and Spencer um, can be great. <laughs> And all we see is big, big floppy big dongs. Big, big, <laughs> big dicks. I mean, Drake is part of our party, so there's basically a big floppy dong all over the place right now. It's it's true. Big old aerial. Um. So, uh, you see these things that you can make out to be um, big old titties. Big old titties on, on wings. Can you describe the areolas? Um, they are, they are, they look like they've been beaten to shit. Oh. Um, if they're, if these creatures are breastfeeding, they're, they're just in different directions. How many inches? Uh, gotta be at least a fist. Okay. Like, nice. However, Very you, nice. however you want to. Um, and they're flying around. There's some of them are hovering. Um, you hear a little bit of mute, uh, of noise, um, and give me everyone except for are are you above water uh, in shark form? Or are you still below? Or is Lone Star the only one poking his head up? I mean, you you have you you saw them, so you. I I think you would be like halfway out, like surfing. All right, give me a. Um, because I would have leaned down, tapped him, and told him telepathically, Look, titties. You hear, uh, Lone Star. Let me see, let me try to do this, and then I'll tell everyone else in the group, Hey, look, titties. 
You see, um, give me a DC wisdom saving throw. With uh, Sprock, you get dis you get advantage, and Chris, you do not. You uh, Sprock gets advantage, and Chris gets normal. A normal right. wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a twelve. I got a ten. So. Uh, <clears throat> Shark is fine. Um, Chris, the harpy, which you are, are looking at, they're singing a song. And the song that you are going to be listening to in your mind is, uh, is, um, um, Push by, who's that? Is that song? Uh -huh. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Savage, no, it's not Savage Heart. What is it? Push. I want to push you around. Yeah, uh, Matchbox 20, push. That's right. You, you hear Matchbox 20, push, being sung by the harpies. Um, and you are going to have to move in the direction of the harpies. Um, okay. I think it's. I, I was going that way anyway. Um, the harpy, the target is incapacitated, ignores signs of other harpies if the charm target is more than five feet away from the harp uh, harpy they must move in in that direction um and you may do saving throws if you want so you have to move towards the harpy the one that's uh singing towards uh in your direction is um i will start decorating them uh shortly um oh. Um, you you are underground. What would you like to do? You're under the. You don't you you have to remember you don't know what exactly is happening uh, above, but you do see you can see with your perception your your given perception. Um, I think it's eleven or ten that uh, the the shark creature that you just saw. Um, and this bird, owl bird creature that you guys just uh, spent time fighting down there that Drake introduced you to are floating up on the water level and you see that Lone Star is starting to make his way towards the um, ship. <laughs> Can't hear you. All right, dying. This is uh, Tevrit's turn. Whose turn? Tevrit, Mike. Right. Um, all right, so am I, am I out of the water now? Or am I still climbing up the chain? You're, you're underneath the water, you're 20 feet down. It's up to you what you want to do. I'm going on the boat. I'm climbing all the way up. All right, so you're underneath, so your turn uh since you're climbing um you are you get to 10 feet underneath so i will let you um go up either side of the of the boat which um which side are you going to be going up uh from what i can tell are there any uh advantages or disadvantages of what side i take um no can i see or hear anything that would lead you me? just you know your friends are on the left like I'll, I'll go with my boys okay so uh the side of the ship and the, you're directly underneath the ship and i'll say that the you come up to the side of the ship i guess um where the anchor would have been thrown the anchor would have been thrown right here um circular right here uh so you see your friends over here it's about 40 feet away you are going to be uh sorry over here there you are so that's your complete movement is right there and with that your head becomes above above the water 
you're going to have to give me a constitution, I mean, a, sorry, a, a wisdom saving throw. Uh, I'm also wearing a shark's head, so. Give me a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Uh, that's really bad. Oh my God, that's even worse. Oh, no, there's a uh, four. Oh. <laughs> you also hear push from Matchbox 10. <laughs> And you are going to be going to the uh, heartbeat that is hanging on this uh, in the middle of the boat on one of the masts. And I will try to make him red if that works. And I, I have to follow him. No, uh, you you are you are being you will every movement that you have, you'll move towards him. Okay. He's he's uh, twenty feet in the air on the mast. Is he alive? Mm -hmm. You do not know what's on the boat yet, though. Um, okay, so the harpies are just singing. Um, Chris, what are you doing? I'm jumping off of the shark and swimming towards the harpies, or the whatever they are. Okay. Um, okay. And how? What's your movement? It says here, the harpy sings um, "Push" by Match Matchbox Twenty. Every humanoid and giant within three hundred feet of the harpy that can hear the the song must succeed uh, a DC Wisdom saving throw or be charmed until the song ends. The harpy makes. Uh, must take a bonus action in the subsequent turns to continue singing. It can stop singing at any time. The song ends uh, if the harpy is incapacitated. And while it's charmed by the, the harpy, the target is incapacitated and ignores the songs of other harpies. If the charmed target is more than five feet away from the harpy, it must move towards the harpy. Um, so I think all you have to do is move towards it. Uh, I think that's the... And then can I make the saving throw at the end of my turn, or is it just until they stop singing um, the song? It does not avoid opportunity attacks. It must make the most direct route. It does not. Yep. But before moving into damaged terrain, uh, such as lava or pit, whenever it takes damage from a source other than the harpy, the target can repeat the saving throw. So you have to take damage. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to jump off of the shark and start swimming towards it. Oh, so that's, that's half speed, like my dash is my full speed, so 30 feet. Yeah, I just use the squares. Yeah. I'm trying to do it on the Zoom. The boat, the boat, the boat is uh, 10, 10 feet. Which which one am I charmed by? The one in the middle. The, oh, it's, okay. Five. 10, 15, 20, 25. And I guess trying to climb the side of the boat for five feet up. That's fine. So you're halfway there. Halfway right. to the boat. Um, Chris, I mean, uh, 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 Jake uh, Sprock, um, you have succeeded the saving throw. Um, I don't know if you have to do that every turn. Um, just just individual harpies. So, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to also go over to both and change back into myself and start to climb it as well. Interesting. And um, Tevret. You're closest. You have uh, to make the most direct route to this harpy. Am I? Am I already? Where am I? Am I right now? Floating. You are floating ten feet below the deck. Okay. I guess I will. Uh, I will move alongside the the boat maintaining you know sea level for 30. Yeah, you, know, you have to go the direct most direct route to the heartbeat. But that would require me to climb. 
Yeah, it'll be up and over. So climbing will be half your half your. You'll be twenty. You'll use twenty feet to get ten feet up the side. Well, direct is going to go five, ten, and then climb up. So basically, I get to the top right here. Yeah. All right. Give me a perception check. I don't like how my avatar changed. That's okay. It's not okay. What I want perception. That is a six. All right. Um, you're not sure that you've seen these before, but there are um, these big globby jello looking things on the board. Um, Do they look like uh, you look, you look over and you see these you see these large gel uh jello like objects um they are on board um they are sort of they're not moving um you do see that that's it that's all you see because you roll the fucking six true Uh, a bonus, can I, I guess, do do bonus action. Um, yeah, you can. You you don't have any any control over your movement, but I guess you can. I don't, I don't get. Does this guy not have a a movement bonus action? Oh yeah, you can. You have to move directly into the. Um, yeah, you have to use all of your movement. But do I? I don't see it in. You might not have a bonus action movement option. Okay, then I do not. Okay, so you have three uh, turns. No, actually, you have two turns until you're done with your rage. I think I'm done with rage, to be honest. Oh, yeah, you are. I'm sorry. You are done with rage. All right, so you, you get on the board. You see these um, jello-like objects. Um, you'll be familiar with them from your past. Uh, floating on board. Um, not floating, but just moving around. The uh, board seems to be squeaky clean. Um, there is no sign of any familiars um, in your area. There's a harpy that's singing his song in the middle of the uh, deck. And I would roll, I think everyone's gonna roll initiative here. Maybe maybe this is too many. There you go. All right, yeah, everyone roll me initiative because I think this is how we're gonna have to do it this way. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I got a two. So did I, but mine turned into a four or a six. So yeah, I stayed a two. <laughs> So Sprock, what'd you get? What was it? Um, initiative. We had 12. Um, Sprock got a 12. The gelatinous cubes are going to go at a 13. The harpies are going to go all at once. Oh, wow, harpies got a 19. Uh, Sprock got a 12. Chris, you got a two. Lone Star and Teverick got a two. I got a six. Oh, Teverick. Wow. And Lone wow. Star, two. All right. Gelatinous block. Find this guy. All right, Harpy. Um, he's going to continue to play his his song. Um, that's all he's going to do. And does he even can it work? Can he actually play? Yeah, he that's it. That's all he's going to do. He's going to play his song. Um, Sprock, it's your turn. 
Uh, what are these blocks? They're gelatinous cubes, right? Yeah. Fucking hate gelatinous cubes. They seem very friendly. They are not. Sprock knows what to do with these things. Yeah, get out my wand. <laughs> gelatinous cube. Um, all right, there are four of them. Uh, I am moving the fuck away from this guy. How far can I go? Thirty feet now. Yeah, but you're you're not on the on the boat yet. You haven't jumped. You haven't climbed up. Anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna like shimmy along the side of the boat. I guess half my distance. Which what is each of these squares? Five feet. Yeah. So. Yeah, so 15 feet would be like to hear. Uh, and then for my bonus action, I'm going to try and get up onto the edge of the boat. Okay. Um, that's fine. You're on the edge. All right, so I'm peeking over the edge, and I don't see anybody, right, other than this gelatinous cube here and the one over here. Uh, give me a uh, perception check. Like, I haven't fully gotten onto the boat, but I'm at the edge of the boat. Always on the edge. Oh, Natty 20. All right. You see that... There are 37. Yeah. You, you see that there are harpies. Um, there are two um, hovering above, uh, on, above the water on the left and right of the boat. There are a couple... Um, there are about three on each end of the boat. You see that there's one on the mast in the center. There are four gelatinous cubes. And you see that there are not raggy looking belongings to people. And, uh, you see that there's like um, fishing lines and fishing nets. There's actually some fish carcass in there. There's rotting people. Uh, it's mermen. There are mermen, aqua mermen that have recently been deceased that are um, being dissolved inside of the gelatinous cube. Because you rolled such a high roll, you get the feeling like there is uh, this is a ship, uh, a fishing um, boat of some kind. And somehow the cubes um, either, you don't really know how the cubes got there, but you have a feeling like perhaps they were, um, they were on, on the vessel um, and somehow the harpies uh, and, the, and the cubes, maybe the harpies let the cubes loose. Um, behind you over here um, is the deck and I will uh, draw in a circle right here. This is the, uh, what's it called? The wheel, the captain's wheel, their direction, whatever the hell it's called. The um, wheel. Yeah, and then over here, this is where the uh, churn, turn is underneath. So directly behind, directly behind the wheel underneath the boat is the, uh, where you can shift directions to- The rudder. Rudder. Um, and the uh, ship is the the ship is not moving. The sails are down. Um, and also, you remember that the anchor is there as well. Um, and the uh, harpy is still singing. Um, Pushed by Max Buck Twenty, um, and it is just singing in the top of the mast. Okay. It is now um, wait. Who went? Who got nineteen? I I just went and Our got people. yeah yeah money and everything. So who's after Sprock? Yeah. Um. The gelatinous cubes are gonna go. So I just keep should have gone before, but I'm, I'm a fucking moron. So, um, <laughs> um, so they're gonna go in. How do they? How do they move now? 
Uh, gelatinous cubes take up the entire space. Other creatures can enter the space, but creatures that uh, does so are subjected to the engulfing. Creatures inside the cube, blah, blah, blah. Um, the cube moves up to its speed while doing so it can enter. So I think that the cube goes towards one that it can see. So gelatinous cube can only move 15 feet. So Mike, you are going to be, um, you have to make a, Dex saving throw, or you're going to be engulfed. 17. You jump out of the way. Um, I will move you myself. You jump. This thing comes at you. You jump out of the way. You are five feet within the cube. Um, the cube is going to attack you. Um, takes up the entire space. Actually, I think that's it. Um, doing so all right i don't think it can even when the cube is in plain sight it takes a dc wisdom saving throw check to spot the cube but that's it's your you use you, you you don't see the cubes aren't when the cubes are not moving um each turn it's hard to find them but because they have recently devoured the entire crew you see that they're floating shirts and shit so you can see them um, sometimes cubes don't have anything in them, and you have to uh, do a um, perception check to see them. Uh, I'm not going to have you do that this time, but uh, because they do see you, uh, Jake, are you, are you still on the side of the boat, or are you hanging off the boat? Or were you on the boat? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm off the side of the boat. I like kind of peeked, and I like, you know, I'm, I'm watching stuff move around. Passive perception is eight. He's not going to see you. He's going to see um, um, Trevor. Trevor, Trevor um, and they're going to move 15 in that direction. And um, this harpy is going to continue to play. And it is now, uh, so you got to. So we had a harpy. Harpy got a nineteen, and then the gelatinous cube, Sprock, and now it's uh, Tevrit. No, it's Lone Star. Lone Star. Um, how <laughs> high is the side of the boat? Uh, ten feet. Ten feet. Yeah. So I'm gonna yell to Sprock. Hey, this song is so much better than that one that demon was singing to me all the time. I'm gonna climb up. And then try and shimmy around this gelatinous cube and get right up on this lady. Uh, I think you have to take the most direct route. So I think that's but I, through the even, gelatinous even cube. through harmful stuff. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Very good question. Because uh, I can see the cube. So I would know while, what they are. While charmed by the harpy, a target is incapacitated and ignores the songs of other harpies. If the charmed target is more than five feet away from the harpy, um, it must move in the most direct path. It does not avoid opportunity attacks, but before moving into dangerous ter terrain, which is what this would be, um, such as lava or a pit or a gelatinous cube. Yep. And whenever it takes damage the source uh, from a source other than the harpy, you may repeat the saving throw. So I can repeat the saving throw. Yeah. So you're going to give me a, so you might get engulfed here. So you'll have to do, you'll have to do me a, de a dex save. And Wait, do you have to do a save to go into it first? Yeah, you have to do, I think you're just going to go into it. I don't think you're going to, uh, it does not avoid opportunity attacks. The target can repeat the saving throw. A creature can also repeat the saving throw at the end of its turn. Um, so once you take damage, you can do a saving throw to get rid of the harpy thing. But uh, how does this work with a gelatinous cube? So let's just say you're right next to a gelatinous cube. Um, well, okay, I, I'll um, well, I'll use that roll because you said I could do it at the end of my turn too. Yeah. 
So that one I failed for the end of my last turn. So I didn't roll it then. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, I'll run into the cube. And right. do I have slowed speed in the cube? So you all of a sudden the noise drowns drowns out. Um, you are engulfed uh, in the cube, um, and uh, the creature can choose up to five feet back or to the side of the cube. A creature that chooses not to push suffers a consequence. Fails like on a fit. Hold on. How the hell does this work? On a successful save. So you have to do a dexterity save. You failed that. You're in the cube. So the cube, you enter the cube space and you take 10, you take 10 damage uh, okay. when, when engulfed. You can't breathe okay. and you're restrained. So um, I take 10 damage. Yeah. And then I make another wisdom saving throw because I took damage. Yes. That's cocked. So it's going to be damage. Seven, no, I fail. Wisdom. And then on the beginning of the cube's turn, you take more damage. Okay. And um, you can, how you far can, can I move in the cube? Um, I will say that as a bonus action, when you are engulfed in it, you can try to break free. And if you break free, <laughs> you will be right next to the cube. Um, that'll be on your next turn. Okay. And a golf creature can try to escape by taking an action to make a DC. So you can you have to use an action. And since you All right. So it, next turn, I use my action to pop out on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. But you don't hear the music anymore because you took damage. You, or did you fail it? I failed. Oh shit! So you're just you're just chilling, listen to listen to Matchbox Twenty. Well, yeah. I took the damage. I failed the save, and I'm just sitting there like. It's a little dull, but it's still good. I don't mind it this soft. <laughs> um, okay, I think that covers it. Yeah, nice. This thing, whoever made this gelatinous cube is great. All right. Um, tra Travis. <laughs> Trevit. Trevit. Clement? Uh, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to barrel roll into this thing. <laughs> you have to... I think I'm I'm gonna run as if I'm trying to break through a door and barrel roll through this thing as fast and so, hard as I can. So seems ill advised. So you're gonna you're gonna try so hard to run through this thing. Um you first things first, you're gonna take 10 damage. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah, so you're going to go in, so, but you're going to try to use your momentum and strength to try to barrel roll through it. So I'm, yes. going, to allow, I'm going to allow you to do a, you're engulfed and you're restrained. So you're going to give me a disadvantage strength check uh, to break through the other side. But you're going to take, you're going to take 10 damage though. All right, disadvantage strength check. All right, that's, that's an easy 22. Oh, 22 and 27. So you barrel through, take 10 damage, and that was a disadvantage. That was a disadvantage. 27 was disadvantage? Uh, like 22. Fucking close. Okay. You barrel, you, you emerge. You have no movement left, though. Um, but you did take damage, so you get to do a wisdom saving throw to see if you're still listening to this music. <laughs> Three. All right, you are fucking just jamming out. <laughs> Love this fucking thing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna have to delete some harpies because this is a lot more intense than I thought. Um, harpies are gonna go. Uh, Harpy One is going to stop singing music. Um, thank goodness. And uh, this Harpy is going to fly away, and this Harpy is going to fly away, and so is this one, and so is this one, and so is this one, and so is this one. There's too many Harpies. All right. Um, actually, 
Sorry, ESO. There we go. So you have five harpies. Um, uh, harpy one or harpy three, I guess, is going to fly over. Um, how much movement do they have? They have not enough. So they're going to come in, and he's going to come in over here. This guy's going to stay. He's going to stay. This guy's going to stay. All right, music stops. Um, it is now Gelatinous Cube's turn. Gelatinous Cube is going to take, um, is going to move towards you, Mike, and you're going to have to give me a dex saving throw. 22. You are going to jump out of the way. So you're going to go one, two, three. It's going to come one, two, three over here. You're just going to be out of its way. Gelatinous cube over here is going to come towards you. Uh, one, give me another deck save. Another deck save? Mm -hmm. 22. You're going to jump one, two, three. Uh, and it's going to be right here. My gelatinous cubes are, are adding up. Um, Sprock, one, two. I'm not on the boat yet. Uh, Passive perception, let's see. Does not see you. So, Mike, <laughs> sorry, buddy. One, two, three. It almost gets you. It's right there. You are surrounded by, by these gelatinous cubes. Um, gelatinous cubes went. Harpies went. Um, harpies need to make a... Save here. No, it's next time. Uh, Sprock, it's your turn. I'm going to cast invisibility on myself. Nice. And then I'm going to come up on top of the ship over to here. Okay. And I'm going to do. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna do a perception check and see if there's anything over here that I can like grab or kind of like roll or throw towards that herpy that's turned the other way and singing to Lone Star. Where's Where's that boomerang? The harpy, the harpy in the middle that was singing the Lone Star stopped singing. Oh, uh, what's it doing? You do have a. Are you gonna you you roll perception? Yeah. Okay. So what'd you roll? I rolled a uh, 10. There are two doors. There's one, and I will make them in colors. Um, just like any boat, um, I guess. There's a door. <laughs> and there's a door here that goes inside to, if you are familiar with Boats, which I don't, I think you are because of what we said earlier, um, where the red marks are here. There's, um, these are stairs that lead up. Um, yeah. All right. Up and down um, over here. Oh, that was terrible. Um, yeah. And the doors lead down. <laughs> doors lead in and down. Yeah. Um, so you get the idea that there's a down, a downstairs. Um, and I'll have to redraw that stuff, but you should. Um, All right, well, I'm going to open the door and go in a little and see if I can see any good, like, weapons or things to, like, throw at them or use to attack them. Okay. See what I can see. All right. Um, oh, crap. Just as you enter... Um, let me draw this now over here. I'm also, I'm going to have to like bounce soon. I'm like fading and not feeling well. That's okay. Sorry. That's all right. Just as you enter, you see that there's one merman um, inside here behind a couch. Merman or mermaid? A merman. Damn. Dick flopping around. <laughs> Big dick. 
Um, and he will look like a fucking dark elf. Because that's what they look like. Oh, shit. Um, and you are inside this booth. And he says, he says, oh, ha, ha. Help me. I'm invisible, so he just hears me. No, oh, yeah, he, he can't see you, so he's just shivering over here in the corner. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I I don't know how much more movement I have left in me, but I can. I'm gonna ask him, "Who are you?" <laughs> he turns around and he says, "Like." Who said that? And I'm going to say, I asked you first. And he backs up a little bit. First, cubes, then harpies, now invisible people. <laughs> what is happening here? Who are you? What do you want? Prove to me that you're not. He's going to say, he's just going to shrink down the corner and go into a ball. Okay. I say, do you have anything down here to fight the gelatinous cubes? We just, we're just a shipping vessel. And we have cannons. What did you, what is your shipping vessel carrying? Fish and cannons. All right, you're worthless. Stay here. And no, I'm please, gonna please creep don't back. hurt me. Please I'm don't gonna, hurt me. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore that asshole. I'm gonna creep back up the stairs and I'm gonna be looking out the door at what's going on with the gelatinous cubes and them up on top. Nice. All right. Um good turn, good turn. Low star, it's your turn. I'm going to try and pop out of this cube since I'm no longer charmed and I'll stop playing. Uh, give me a dex, or no, a strength save. Strength save, fuck. Ooh. Okay. Nope. Um, that's a six. All right. Um, you take 21 acid damage. I'm going to use my bonus action to give myself eight more temp HP. Okay. And that's my turn. Um, Tre Trevin, it's your turn. Who? Trevin, it's your turn. Um, is this harpy still controlling me? Um no, it no, it was it stopped singing. Mm. All my all my boys are they've gone down under. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, I think the only direction I could go without getting in the cubes is straight. So I will. What's that harpy duping out there? Just chilling? Yeah. Uh, all right. I guess I will let the harpy live for now, just given that I'm surrounded by death. Uh, and I will run past these cubes and I will, again, throw myself as fast and hard as possible this direction towards my friends. Uh, towards Sprock? Yes. Um, all right. Give me a dex save. Because you're going to squeeze by the pillar and uh, the gelatinous cubes not get damaged. Uh, it's a natty one. Okay. So you are also a goal. I thought there's plenty of room there. I'm not fat. <laughs> you take 10 damage. Um you're jiggly. I fucking was running full speed. 
And uh, just like that, all of a sudden, um, you guys are going to hear this big, get off our ship, now is the time. Um, doors in the, on the edge are going to open up, um, and four mere, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, um, Aquamen are going to come out of the, of the uh, wheeling um, a cannon. They're going to try to shoot um, the gelatinous cubes, um, and they're going to aim. Uh, they only have two, and they're going to aim one um, at the gelatinous cube that has uh, Tevrit in it, and they're going to shoot the other one over here. Um, gelatinous cube on a, on a fire shot from the cannon. Um, that is going to hit with a 17. Wait, where's their thing? Yeah, they're, they're shitty. <clears throat> and the other one is going to hit as well. Um, so, and because it's a cannon, it's going to get shot and hit five feet in one direction. Um, and it's going to move. Why don't you roll me? Actually, you know what? Uh, Chris, since you're in one of them, why don't you roll me a D4 to see which direction, 10 feet, this uh, gelatinous cube is going to get hit. A1. So it's going to be north. Uh, so actually, that'll be south then. Um, so disadvantage south. It's going to get hit right next to yours. Um, Mike, give me a roll for which one yours is going to go in, in which direction yours is going to get shot in. And you're also going to have um, a save that you can do. What was, I'm sorry, say it again. Um, these guys over here jumped out and shot a cannon at this gelatinous cube that you were in. Um, you're going to give me a deck save and a strength save. Actually, you're going to give me a strength save. But you're also going to uh, roll a four and tell me which direction the... the... <laughs> well, because my deck save was a natty one, so that's good. <laughs> my strength save is uh, 17. All right, so, um, and give me a, a roll of a four. A roll of a four? One, one D4. One. Okay, it's gonna also move back 15 feet. Um, so you sort of sucker down and stay, and this big gelatinous cube gets fired past you. It's gonna be dealt uh, eight each. Eight. Um, you see here that the mirror men are trying to take over what you can tell are their is their ship, and they're going to go with a roll of seven. So they're going to go in between you guys. Um, the harpy number, how many are there? There are four. Harpy number two, which is this one, is going to start to sing, and he's going to sing um, Chumba Wumba. Um, and I get knocked down exactly, and the mirror men are all going to start walking towards him. Um, around here and over here. And uh, Chris, give me a, a saving throw. Uh, you're actually you're you're fine, you're you're okay, okay. you're fucking wrapped up. Well, actually, you know, you have to you have to give it to me too because you have to see if you're gonna <laughs> give me wisdom. Would I have advantage since I'm in the queue? Yeah. Yeah, move that D4. That's uh, ooh, that's a 17. All right, you break free from your from your um well you, you don't break free from the gelatinous cube, but you are you don't get trapped with the um the harpy song. Mike, give me a wisdom save. That's not good. Jake, give me a wisdom save. Three. <laughs> Even as invisible, a three. Yeah, you're gonna you have to make your way over there. Um, Four, Fourteen. Um, oh no, you're fine. You don't like Chumbawamba. Um, Mike, would you would you roll a three? Okay, so Gelatinous cues are now gonna go. Um, one, two. Give me a saving throw, Mike. Dex. Oh my good God! Six. You get engulfed and take ten damage. 
Uh, gelatinous cube is going to go. This guy doesn't go because he's. Oh, actually, this guy is going to go this way. And at 19, this guy jumps out of the way, but he wants to jump towards the harpy. Um, and this guy is going to also go towards the other one. I feel like we're fading. And just at this moment, Lone Star, give me a saving throw. Or no, give me a perception check. <laughs> A natural one. Okay. Instead of it being the way I wanted it to be, it's going to go like this. The There's a big bubbling happening right next to the ship. Massive bubble coming up. And you see... Uh, in the middle of the bubble, there is a, a rock, just a, like a cone rock that emerges from the, from the water. Now you are, um, there's the rock. You are, you remember that there was 200 feet underneath you. Mm -hmm. it's sort of shocking to see a cone rock start to rise. I was going to do it a different way, but have to do it this way since you rolled a fucking natural one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah. I do what I can. Yeah. Um, Sprock, you, you, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Sprock, it's your turn. Sprock, I think we lost. He's going to end up, um, he's still invisible. Oh, here he is. Yeah. <clears throat> is there a cannon down here? In the room I'm in. Um, give me a perception check. Investigation check. Oh damn! I got a twenty-three perception check. All right, investigation check. Mm -hmm. I also got a twenty-three. Look at that. No, there's not. It's just the captain's deck. Below. Okay. There's finger food. There's finger food? Mm -hmm. It's a ship. It's a shipping vessel and not very glamorous. Right. I'm going to take out my wand to wander and concentrate on the singing uh, guy. I like that. Okay. Let's go, baby. Right. I think it's gonna be my last thing I do. Okay, let's see what happens. Fifty-three. What the fuck is fifty-three? Here we go. I get banished in some other. No, no, it's the singing guy that I did. <laughs> uh, you enlarge the target as if you had cast enlarge reduce. If the target can't be affected by that spell, or if you didn't target a creature, you become the target. So, what does enlarge do? Becomes <laughs> a size larger. I think it increases. Let's see, enlarge. Yeah, that's great. All right, you cause a creature and an object you can see within range to grow larger or smaller from the duration. Uh, choose either a creature or an object that is neither uh, worn nor carried. If the target is unwilling, it can make a constitution saving throw. On a success, the spell has no effect. All right, constitution. If uh, the five. The five. Uh, it is 15, so that's not going to do it. How big does it get? All right, the target size doubles in all dimensions, and its weight is multiplied by eight. This growth increases its size by one category from medium to large. <laughs> if there isn't enough room uh, for the target to double its size, the creature and object attains the maximum possible size in the space. Until the spell ends, the target also has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. 
the target's weapon also grow to match its new size. While these weapons are enlarged, the target's attacks with them deal 1d4 extra damage. Oh, great. So it, you know, made him stronger. Yeah. Can, can, he, can he still stand on that uh, podium, or is, that, is he too tall now, too big, he falls off? Uh, it, he, he's floating, and he's flying in the air next to the ship. Bitch. Um, just as the, as you guys are figuring that out, um, a big chain, give me a, uh, a perception check, uh, tre Trevor, tre 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 Teverit, 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 yeah. What check? Actually, loans. Actually, you know what, Sprock, you're you're <laughs> very fucking perception. You're looking at it. So your passive perception. You see this chain with a hook, dash and bang into the wooden in, into the wood. Oh, that's that's too much. Um, into the wood of the uh, of the deck, right where that black shit is. Um, and fucking Sprock pulls himself up and he's yelling and screaming. He's coming! Oh my God, he's coming! Sort of excited, and the and the and the the mask on his face is open a little bit. He's coming! Um, I've awakened it. Is that my boy Brock? What's your boy Brock? I mean, uh, Drake. He uh, he says he's awakened it. I've awakened it. Um, he climbs up. <laughs> Um, jumps up on the thing. He's enraged. I've awakened it. Um, and he's going to come over and run over towards um, Trevor, wherever the fuck. And he's going to hit this gelatinous <laughs> cube um, with um, your boy, Drake. He's just going to do some damage here. He's going to hit him with um, one, two, and three hits. Um, that's gonna deal. I hope it's a lot for you. 20. Oof. 11. 31 and 6, 31, 47 damage to this thing. I like how you guys don't deal any damage to the bad guys. 47. Um, he's trying to break you free. Uh, it did not work yet. And now he's gonna have, he's gonna listen to the music and. <laughs> He's not very smart, so wisdom save. Uh, 10, he's gonna say, I like that song. Um, and he's gonna start walking, he's gonna, next turn he's gonna have to start walking towards the harpy. So the harpy flew off the boat? The harpy is floating over here. There's okay. Only, there are four four harpies. Okay. Um, it is, and he goes right after, so Lone Star's return. Drake is- So it, is there a harpy in the center of the boat too? Yes, there's okay. one. There are five actually. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna tell uh, Trevor it wiggle to the side to reach your arm out, and I'm gonna try and like swim towards the side and just reach my arm out and smack his arm, holding him, and cast Thunder Wave right in the center of the two cubes. Okay, holding uh, his arm to try and give him some sort of advantage to not fly off. Um, okay, so give me uh, Trev Trevor. Give me a strength set. Spencer, you're gonna, need to, you're gonna need to game for me. Sorry. Fun, I got it. All right, have fun, guys. Okay. Good night, Jake. Feel better. Hi, yeah. Jake. You're invisible. Twenty six. <clears throat> Just let let the record show that Jake's character hidden a ball in invisible in fear. All right, so for the remainder of the game. So um, you guys, you, you're lock hole. And I cast Thunder Wave. So both cubes and the harpy need to make um, constitution saves. Okay. DC 16. Ooh. All right, which cube, both cubes? Both cubes. It's a 15 foot cube that I do it in. Shit, all right, constitution. I'm gonna try and like, Avoid hitting Trevor it as much as I can. 15 for the cubes and the harpy as well. Yeah. All right, harpy. 15 for the cubes. 
and constitution is a plus one. 15, wow, 14, so wait, 15 for everyone. It was a say, DC 16, so they all fail. Okay, what does that mean? So they all take eight D or 3D8 damage, thunder damage. Makes sense. Um, so that's uh, 13 thunder damage. And they all get pushed away from that point uh, 10 feet. All right, so I was hoping to try and throw both cubes off the boat and the harpy somewhere, and just the right. two of us standing there locking arms. So this cube, one, two. Uh, all right, so this one. Thinking the one on me would fly. The oh, other the direction. other direction. Okay, so this one flies off. This one's going to have to make a dex save to stay on. Uh, and I'll be a. It's a square. So it'll be a 15. So a plus one. Fall off. Nice. It's a three. They, they both fall off into the water. Um, Harpy now is going to be blasted. 50, how many feet? 10 feet back? 10 feet. 10 feet. A large Harpy is got an 18. Uh, no, I didn't roll. I didn't no, roll. the large Harpy isn't involved. It's just this one here. Oh, okay. So this one is going to stay where he's at. No, sorry. This one gets blasted 15 feet this way. Yeah. And how much damage? Uh, the 1,300 damage. All right. Harpy 13, not looking very good. And bonus action. Now I already have that 10 HP. Um, and that's it. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll tell Everett, stay with me. I got you. The, <laughs> uh, the My brother. The mere men are going to jump off and swim towards the large. Um, the, they're going to be in the water now, swimming towards the large harpy, um, which are which are dumb. And uh, the water next to you, Lone Star, give me a perception check. A seven, no eight. Um, you see a larger mound of rock rising, still rising. Hever, do you know what this rock is? I don't know. Let's find out, though. <laughs> yeah, let's get the fuck off this boat. I um, like the boat. Drake is going to say, Drake is going to yell, oh, it's coming, but this music is so good. Is uh, he still playing after he got smacked? Uh, no, he's got to, no, he's done. Um, Drake is going to say, Jesus. Um, where are you, Lone Star? Tebrit, it's your turn. Um, this harpy got smacked and is on the ground, is, is floating towards the ground. You can reach him. He's floating? Fucking he's cutting his head like, He was flying about 10 feet. He got knocked off the thing and he's floating. This is what happens when you fuck with me? I'm coming after him. Double attack. With your great axe or your berserk axe? With my berserk axe. <laughs> is there any other <laughs> yeah. he's 26 a that hits that hits with any other nine damage double attack oh no 16 that hits hell yeah it does. Harpy, does it hit Harpy? that hits nine plus 16 25 describe, describe your kill Oh, this little bitch. I fucking slice one of his wings off, I slice the other wing off, and then I fucking just jab him right in the face. Yeah, you do. And I, I take my little knife out and I, I carve off his little head. I put that on with my little shark head. Did you use all of your attacks? I used two attacks. Is but I'm not berserking. Uh, I think, okay. I think you're supposed to. Okay. Um, all right, so well, Harpy, roll a D. You know what? Since you killed the first one, roll a D4. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do it for you. Three, one, two, three. A big Harpy, big Harpy is gonna start singing again. Uh, he's gonna start singing and he's gonna continue to sing Chumbawamba. Um, 
Drake is going to have to do a save. Uh, he passes with a, what is that? Wait, hold on. I don't think he does. No, it's a tie. So it goes to Drake. Yeah. Um, uh, 11. And uh, Lone Star, give me a, a roll. A 18. That passes. And Trevor. Trev. Big Trey. Trevor. Trey. Hev. Trev. Trev. Hev. What kind of throw? Uh, wisdom. A Teverett roll. One. All right. You love that. 31. Song. You love that song, and you're going to move some very close to the edge over here. Um, just like that, this massive, massive rock hand comes out from where it was bubbling. This thing is huge, almost the size of the entire ship. Imagine it's hanging above, like here's the ship. It's hanging above the ship. Drake is going to look over at uh, Lone Star and he's going to say, I told you it's coming. He's coming. He wants his, he wants his boomerang, I think. I don't know. And uh, it's a massive hand is hovering above, <laughs> above this, uh, this ship. I'm going to throw the boomerang. Um, at the hand? Yeah. Okay. The boomerang is uh, Storm Boomerang. And Storm Boomerang has a plus six. Okay. Storm, Storm Boomerang is a, is a ranged weapon carved from a griffin bone and etched with the symbol of elemental air. When thrown, its range is, is 120 feet. And any creature that is proficient with the javelin is also proficient with this weapon. On a hit, the boomerang deals 1d4 bludgeoning damage and 3d4 thunder damage, and the target must succeed a DC 10 saving throw or be stunned until the next turn. On a miss, it returns to your hand. That was amazing. So I'm going to throw it. Throw it at the hand. Ooh, 17 plus 6, 23. 23. So the D4, that's 3. And then it's a, well, let me pull that up. Storm boomerang, you said? Yeah. So I got to do a constitution. DC 10 constitution saving throw for the enormous rock giant hand um, that is coming to grab the ship and or people. Um, 12. No, 11. I just passed. Thank God. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> All right. So, so, so it, how much thunder damage was it? It's a 3d4 and then 1d4 bludgeoning. So it was the three bludgeoning yeah. and then 3d4 thunder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me roll these 3d4. That's two, four, five thunder damage. Okay. Okay, and then does it come back to me too? Um, yes, it comes back to you. Okay. Yeah. Fucking sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, there's a massive, massive... Uh, I don't even know. All right, so it's... Whose turn is it? Gelatinous cubes. Gelatinous cubes are going to move this way, 15, and this way, 15. You got to give me a dex save. Um, Chris, we're getting engulfed. Natural fucking 20. Um, natural 20. You are so... Um, you jump backwards and these cubes sort of meld into one. Where is Drake right now? Uh, Drake is over here. Okay. Um, 
Sprock's turn. Sprock is going to shoot a bow at um, the harpy with a two. It's not going to hit, just shoots back. Um, and he's going to turn into a bear. And actually, no, he's not going to do that. He's going to stay put. Um, Drake is going to come over um, and he's going to throw. Drake's got some good shit. Jake's going to throw. Drake's going to throw his javelin at the harpy. Um, a ooh, I don't know if that hits. A, it does. Thirteen hits a harpy. Wow, oh, fucking stupid bitch. Um, but he's going to get multiple attacks. So that's nine damage to harpy, the big harpy. And then he's going to throw another one. Uh, twenty-one hits. That's going to be a thir another 13. Ooh, this guy's not doing well. Another hit will kill him. Oh, it's close to a fucking... Okay, he's dead. 18 damage. Wait, does that add up to that? I think that Harpy's got... Uh, when he became bigger... I think plus he got 13 some. plus 9. No, I don't think his health increased. Um, they only have 40 health, or 38. Harpy, Harpy Big is dead. Fucking javelin... Uh, Drake just shoots three fucking javelins straight through his face. Um, and he's dead. Uh, it is Lone Star's turn. Lone Star is going to uh, turn and run towards Drake. Um, grab the fucking finger. Five, ten, fifteen as I run by. Let's get the fuck away from this hand. Um... And as I do that, I'm going to use my action to pick up the dead body of this other harpy and pull it into my necklace. And then tell my worm, feast my my pretty. <laughs> and then run um, another, so that's 20, 25, and then I'll yell to the everyone else, let's get the fuck out of here. And uh, jump off the boat for my last five feet of movement. Um okay. Give me um so you jump off the boat and Drake uh is behind you. Um <laughs> exactly get the fuck away <laughs> from the shit. So as you go, as you sink down, um as you jump off, uh uh Drake is gonna follow you, he's gonna jump right in. Um, fuck this boat. Um, Sprock is gonna stay where he is. He's gonna hide invisible. <laughs> He's gonna hide invisible. Um, Trevor, what do you want to do? Um, didn't you summon this thing, my friend? You said you you awoken awakened it. He said uh, he, Drake is gonna say. You remember Drake's stupid. He's gonna say, "Oh, this! I was down there trying to figure out how to get through, and then this rock giant said he had a headache and he needed help, and I, I don't know what to do. I, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, I was gonna rage, but I'm tired. I don't know. Um, don't think I can beat beat this one on my own." Um, and he jumps off. All right, that's not a good sign. Uh, all right, let's get the fuck out of here then. As you jump into the water, uh, Chris, you see um, you're the first one that goes in. Mm -hmm. um, you see a, this massive stone giant. Massive. Yeah. Um, and he is telepathic. And he can communicate to you. Oh. Uh, and he says to you, and he looks exactly like this. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> love it. He I love said, it. Great. <laughs> I'm sorry to frighten you. I've been having this headache for a long time. Will you help me 
find a way to end this ache. And he says, and he says, no. And he hits his hand up and the boat goes flying in the air and, sh and literally lifts the boat up in the air and bits and pieces of the boat come, come falling down. Um, it's not sunken yet. Okay. He says, Drake, you awoke me. And Drake says, I don't know what you're talking about. And he kind of Drake kind of takes his mask and puts it puts it closed. <laughs> <laughs> Scoop a mask back on. Yeah. Can you control him, Drake? No. Well, that's a mistake. <laughs> what, uh, where where is your ache? In my head. How can I get in there? And he points to you. He's like, in my ear. Come Follow me, boys. Let's go in the ear. So. And I tell him, we'll be gentle. Talos offers his blessings. And I reach in my bag and I pull out a uh, roll of d20. <laughs> you didn't ask his, his name? Well, I will. Don't 18, you worry. 18. 18? Mm -hmm. You? Oh, okay. So as I pull out of this bag a large jade stone worth 200 gold pieces. And I say, my friend, thank you so much. And we, we will find a way to ease your suffering. And I wedge this jade stone in his what looks like his crown in a, a little spot so it looks nice and what was your name my good friend my good uh rock giant the rock giant looks over at you and he kind of puts his hand out and you guys are standing on it or floating above floating right above it he doesn't want to scare you and he says my name is treple I am a giant stone giant. <laughs> a, a giant stone giant? Yeah. Largest you've ever seen. Largest headache you could imagine. Pretty ugly. He's he huge. is not ugly. He is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this crown with this nice stone. <laughs> it sparkles in this light, in this beautiful diffuse water light he says to drake he says you come to me now you awoken me and he grabs drake by his ear by his by his hand and he puts him up to his ear and you can just see that when he leaves it drake is no is uh, no longer there and he says you too I need your assistance. Maybe, I don't know. Something bad is happening. Something what do you have to offer? Lone Star swims right in. Uh, Lone Star follows Drake. Um, he, says, he says, my offering to you is the fact that I might not destroy everything that you've known. I don't know what's happening with my head, but sometimes I just get very angry and I spew. I don't know. Well, if you want help, you're going to have to yeah. offer. Lone Star is going to yell back to, to Trevor. Our ancient friends here, they don't ask for our help. They expect it. And we offer it freely. I like it. Do you want to kill some shit? He looks like he's tough to kill. No, do you want to kill some shit? I want to kill some shit. Follow me. I'll, I'll give you plenty of shit to kill. I'll reach in my bag and roll me a d20, Mike.
<laughs> Good old one. I'm going to pull out a feather. Ethan. Go kill something with this. Mm. Show me how strong you really are. I will accept your feather. And I will go and I will climb up this golem and I will take that feather and I will tickle his ear with it. Um, so what are you going to do? You're going to take the feather. You're going <laughs> to take the golem. I'm going to... Uh, the, 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 the giant rock golem has a... Uh, he said his ear. So I'm going to go up there with that feather and I'm going to tickle his ear a little bit, you know? Longslow's going to face palm and turn, swim, and try and like grab him by the collar and drag him into the ear. Um, the golem is going to shake and shake and shake. Um, give me a deck. Oh, no. Give me a. Let's see. Strength. I think it's going to be. A, give me a dex save. Ten. Um, you get thrown off to the side. Um, and as you get thrown off, Mike, um, the feather that you have sort of. It's hard into the water. It's um, like it's like from a forest gump where the feather is just floating along and yeah. And the stone giant continues to rise and rise out of the water. Um, that's where this um session is gonna end.